Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy, I'm out here living life, I'm busy. Stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. Making moves and catching flights, so please don't waste my time, I'm busy. Stay busy, stay busy, hey, hey, hey. Stay busy, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I'm, of course, your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, also known as the Bald Nigga Bombshell, who has entered the villa, the podcast studio, your headphones, your AirPods, your wired headphones, your surround sound in your crib. If you got a speaker in your bathroom, you listen to pods there, I'm in there too. Just make sure you, you know, Cleanse yourself, wash your hands. <laughs> Jesus and Christ. your legs. I'm, I'm everywhere, my nigga. <laughs> and they also call me Chinedu. I'm the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. But I don't do the show alone. My gang is here. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling? Hey, happy to be here. You know, happy to be here. Um, you know, really just kind of focus on the show, but also focus on them Yankees, guys. <laughs> mm. We focus on the Yankees too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, I had a good weekend. The the Jets tried to steal my joy. The Yankees tried to steal my joy, losing those two games. But I was able to persevere and 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 be happy through it all. Um, like I'm always happy to be with my co-host, Miss Two Bs and Will. Um, and you all should be happy too to be listening to this show. And if you are, make sure you subscribe, like, okay. share, comment, all that good stuff because it means a lot to us. And what we are doing, we are available, of course, on YouTube or your favorite audio streaming platform. And if you want some exclusive bonus, raw, unfiltered, unhinged content, hit the Patreon, what I call the podcast only fans, patreon.com backslash stay busy pod. Now, I, 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 we, I have to congratulate us because we've achieved uh, something as, as a podcast where we have hate watchers. Oh, so I, I, I don't know if y'all checked the YouTube comments. I have not. But there's a, like I, I, I check them every so often and there is a couple like consistent accounts who are always in our comments, like hating on what we're saying, like whether it's Kendrick related or whatever, like they're, they just, they, they, they've said some wild shit too. It's like, Oh, like you only got this many likes or, Oh, you guys sound like pussies. Like, I was like, Oh, all right. Like <laughs> the, the hate is here. But Wait, like pussies with an S like, I'm pussy like y'all yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, like it's, oh, it's, it's nah. us, us. Yeah. Oh, nah. He, 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 he called the collective <laughs> pussy. So I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. I, I almost replied back and I, I was going to clown him, but I was like, you know what? This is what great content does. It's polarizing. Exactly. Makes niggas mad. Not that that's the goal, but not everyone's going to like you. And so I, I, I'm just happy to see, wow, these niggas want to come back, listen to us just to get angry. So salute to you, hate watcher. The, 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 you know who you are. I don't even know your account. It's some weird name, but you know who you are. Keep getting mad, but keep watching. Thank you. Wait, what, did they comment on the last video we just dropped? Yep. Yeah. What they say? Oh, yeah, what they say? Because that I feel like that was good. Uh, that that was us talking about the Kendrick interview at Harper's Bazaar, and there were people. So someone said like something about like, oh, it was a good look because it's like an elite magazine, which I think we acknowledged. Yeah, like, we said it was that. just like we the interview that. itself didn't move us, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a cool magazine. So salute to that. But yeah, just random shit. But typically, when it's and anything Kendrick Drake Cole related, these these consistent accounts are are in there. How many so. accounts is it? It's more than one. It's like. It's there's this one who I see under every episode, and then this this <laughs> last one there were like That's my favorite three one. or four who like all had shit to say about well, what we were saying, like so hey, interesting. Man. Yeah, salute. I want to check, like check that. I Come check beat it. my ass. <laughs> yeah, if you feel away. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's that. So let's jump into this chat. Um, it was like kind of a not as aggressive as a, of a week depending on who you are and what you care about what you prioritize um we can start with something funny though so jada kiss did a complex goat interview with his son <laughs> jay Wan. Uh, how do you feel about jay Wan? by the way people are very um split on him like they feel like he'd be crashing down on twitter he'd be saying too much he's uh he's recently joined the joe button podcast so like he's his opinions are out more and some people like what he brings to the table are y'all even familiar with jay Wan at all i I personally wasn't mm -hmm. like, I didn't know he was like a personality type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but I, yeah, I haven't even, I haven't even known him enough to form an opinion on right. like what he's doing. Like mm -hmm. uh, I've seen the freestyles. Mm -hmm. Um, I know he has that collab on Capella's project. Yep. 
So I do think that, you know, he's a decent rapper. Like, you know, his dad's Jada Kiss. So mm. it's like, you better be. Yep. <laughs> but um, I'm here for the opinions. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I'm a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just straight New York energy. He reminds yep. me of a young New York nigga. So yep. it's just, he's like proof. Him and Cayenne are proof of why I'm raising my kids here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't really have an opinion on him either. Like, there's. He said things that I've agreed with. He said things that I've disagreed with. So it's like none of them have been impactful enough to where I'm like, fuck that guy. Like, I just like he is who he is. I, th- I think he's a cool rapper, too. Um, but yeah, so him and Jadakiss did a goat interview. And uh, one of the questions was the worst rap genre of all time. And Jadakiss was pretty much like the drill shit. Violent drill, sexy drill. Jay wants a gospel drill. And it was like, that's the worst <laughs> rap genre of all time. Um, Thoughts on on the comment. Obviously, we have someone who works very directly with Sexy Drill. We've all expressed that we are we like it. Some of us, well, hold on. We said we like it. You d- d- don't you like Sexy Drill? I'm tired of that shit. Okay, I think it's hit a peak was, and it only works for cash. Was he talking about? Was he talking about drill in, in general, or talking yeah. about? Yeah. So, like, or are you talking about just se- sexy? Like. I, drill as a whole, yeah, th- all the yeah, subgenres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought drill. drill and, I thought and he said drill. Talking real. about the like subgenres of it. Yeah. Okay, well, like, he ain't fucking with none of that drill. shit. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, yeah. I mean, him saying sexy drill is the worst. I, this is whatever because I think no all, drill. Not yeah, just that's sexy what I'm saying. Drill. Like, mm-hmm. like that. Okay, so like, yeah, okay, we're on the same page. Yeah, the drill the same umbrella. Page. I mean, yeah. drill, drill, bro, drill, drill died when 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 K Flock got locked up. Bro, mm. I can't lie. It to died you. when Pop Smoke died. I mean that too. Mm-hmm. K Flock never became a star. It, 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 it everything. It was like a. Uh, I don't know what I would call it, like a shooting star phenomenon type shit that mm-hmm. like blew past and that should just be it. Yeah. And I think people need to, I don't know, open up their minds and move past the point that like, okay, like drill is this, drill is that. Like, bro, we're past that. Mm-hmm. Let these niggas just make music. And mm-hmm. the niggas don't want to make music and they want to keep doing the drill shit. It's going to, you can see it now. A lot of that shit doesn't stick. A lot of, a lot of it, a lot of it's, a lot of it's just homies dissing homies from blocks, and yep. it's like y'all ain't doing nothing but going to jail and killing each other. Which Literally. is, yeah, I, I see, I see <clears throat> clips, and I'll see the names. The names typically have like numbers and letters in them, but I never, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. never hear actual. Like a lot of it, I never hear the actual music. Mm-hmm. Um, Unfortunately, I grew up on a block where it was like you know a prominent block in the genre or whatever, so I heard it against my will. Yeah. Um, there were cool moments. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I wasn't like listening to drill mm-hmm. at all. Like there are certain cool moments, but I just think it's a low vibrational genre as a whole, mm-hmm. and like the skill level that is required to be in it is extremely low, mm-hmm. and it just hits the ceiling. Like there's no, it's a dead end. Yep. Like Andre G reported in um Rolling Stone last week after Dirt got arrested. Like it shows like his arrest shows that Drill is a dead end. Like, he was able to break through the mainstream, do the collabs with Drake, yeah. you know, get the Grammy, and still end up in the in jail. Yeah, yeah, the culture around it is very, um, it's, it's volatile. It's definitely volatile if you actually are engaging in the things that Drill artists typically rap about, which is why, like I said on the show before, I do appreciate guys like Cash, Chow, um, that whole collective who are making it more geared towards women, you know, show like taking those similar sounds, doing the samples, making it for the women. Cause like, yeah, the violent shit, it, it, it just gets old after a while. Like it, go ahead. I think, I think what you just said, um, is so true. And for me, it was an eye opener to the point, like, damn, women really need safe spaces in music. And like, mm-hmm. even, even it being drill and sexy drill and how, how much, women gravitate because you know i'm like i'm a little bit older than cash like you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still hip to shit but like seeing seeing like the younger the younger generation in new york and the new generation in new york really gravitate to that music and like yeah like, women need a women need a space yeah. they want to feel they want to feel safe and have fun and like i think it was an eye-opener not for me just for like a lot of people like mm-hmm. da- like even like i know other artists was watching cash and like people like damn like 
we just started making music for like girls it could have been like this and it's like <laughs> I used to tell niggas like, that yeah. all the time yeah. like yeah. I would get dragged anytime I would go see my mom cause you know they'll be like oh you fucking with the other side you are not fucking with the home team and we're being blackballed and blah 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 and I'm just like y'all I don't believe the folks are blackballed right. if you guys were making better music the labels would fund the beef mm -hmm. Like, you guys are excluding women out of your music. You know, Pop Smoke is saying, baby girl, come meet the woo. Mm -hmm. The Crips always involve the girls. You know, even Fabio, she fell in love with a lit. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they mm -hmm. always incorporate women in their music. So if you're just going to focus on dissing a next man throughout the entire song, then you're not going to get any real traction the way Cash and the Sexy Drill genre did. But yeah. that doesn't change the fact of, like, like, at Powerhouse, I could not hear that shit all day. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Shout out to On The Radar. Shout out to Gabe. Mm -hmm. But like, chow. Yeah. That shit was getting like, once Vonte, Vonte, how the fuck you pronounce that <laughs> shit went on. I'm like, Lord Jesus, R2, R Mo was enough for me. Everything else was enough. And then the Jordan nigga came out to sing Kehlani. I was <laughs> like, damn, why y'all ain't group him with the Slizzies? Because we done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so. Hearing it from someone like Jada Kiss, who grew up a traditional rapper, uh, viewed as one of the best lyricists ever, like, does not surprise me that he doesn't like this brand of music, which people in his position look at as low skill or whatever. And obviously, that's not true in, in the general sense. There are very skilled drill artists. Um, I think the things that get kind of uh, pushed the most via social media or go the most viral don't display the most skill. So it doesn't surprise me that, that he said this. Um, Chow, much respect to Chow. I like a lot of what Chow does, but he flipped <laughs> Jada Kiss saying that into a beat. Niggas uh, stupid. Proving I, his point. I, it was bad. Proving Niggas, his it point. It was bad, bro. I, I was like, all right, like let's, let's, let's see how, how we go flex this. Chow's, Chow's I, th I think Chow's talented. I thought he was going to like, you know, he's going to kill it. And he killed it in the pejorative way. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, so. But he can't even troll right. Yeah, that was... Uh, like, I just wanted to teach him real quick. Yeah. Like, that's, you, ain't, you ain't cutting. Like, I feel like if he either committed to just using the quote or just using we gonna make it, maybe it would have been better. But he did, blending yeah. them just made it... It, it, was, it was chaotic. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't track it. It felt like that Jay-Z meme when he was just, like, <laughs> yeah, trying like, to catch the beat. Yeah. Uh, it was, <laughs> it's not it. So, um, yeah. That is that on that. Um, but obviously... And, Perfect segue. The biggest story of the week. Uh, Lil Durk was arrested in Florida for murder, uh, murder for hire. Um, and obviously it's been a story for years at this point. King Von's death and Slide for Von being a thing. And uh, Dirk obviously being from Chicago, which is viewed as a very violent place. And I mean, we just listen to the lyrics and they're very transparent about, you know, the behavior that they and their collective engage in. And he, Dirk's not the only one, but like. You know, when, when we when we look at like the, the, the YSL Rico case and we see lyrics being used, it's fucked up because it's people's art. But at the end of the day, if you are like infusing real life and talking about things that are actually happening on your music, can you really be shocked if it's used against you? Like, I, I don't want to sound like a fucking Republican or something like like no, I, like I, 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 real I, talk, I, I really hope that that doesn't sound crazy because, <laughs> again, I, I don't like that. Lyrics are used against niggas, but maybe don't tell what you're doing in, in your in your song. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but we know he tried to flee. Like he he tried to fake niggas out. Like <laughs> booked a flight to Switzerland, booked a flight somewhere else, and then Dubai. was trying to fly to Italy. And yeah, he he, he got caught up. So what what was your reactions when when you heard this and just seeing everything with regards to the dirt case? Oh. It, it's a real sad situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I did cackle at the three flight bookings. Yeah, I'm was... not gonna lie, that did make me laugh a little bit, but I just laugh at everything. Yeah. So, uh, so it felt like some like movie shit. Like, yeah. right, like, yo, though, these niggas about to come get us. So book the flight to Switzerland, but I'm not gonna be on it. <laughs> book the flight here, I'm not gonna be on no, it. No, it was definitely some movie shit, gang. It was, <laughs> was definitely it some was, movie it was shit. It was so cinematic. Like y'all are so <laughs> unserious, but um, yo, it's just unfortunate. That nigga got mad kids. Yeah. And I remember he was cleaning up his image right before that. You know, he N turned super Saiyan Muslim. Just made all my life last year. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, come Did y'all see they took back the keys they gave him? They better yeah. have, because that yeah. shit is, that's how you know a fat case coming. 
Man. Anytime you get the key. We are two for two on Keys to the City. Yep. Yeah. He took that shit back. Said, give me that shit. Yeah. Like the ATL ripping off the neck. <laughs> My goodness. Um, yeah, bro. Uh, the, the, this it's, it's it's unfortunate for Dirk. Uh, it's unfortunate for music and just people and just, just you know, the landscape of pop culture. Like, the way Dirk could, because what you just said, maybe they shouldn't put so much into into the raps. I feel like it's like a double-edged sword. It's like a Catch-22 or like mm. a double-edged sword. Like, he was so good at it. He's a great storyteller. And yeah. it, it, the way he, like, yeah, he's like he's one of the best. Mm. And, but it was so good that, like, you got caught up and like they can really see that shit and like some of the reports from the from like the the case and stuff like hanging out the car with a gun doing this and that like them niggas was moving like a movie they was yeah. moving like Scarface like they yeah. was moving like they was moving like Scarface and like and like waist deep put together in like one movie like <laughs> niggas was waist deep wild. Well, what a classic <laughs> bro what a classic I love them that niggas movie. was moving crazy yo <laughs> yeah like come on yeah, man. I yeah. mean, they watched. We all watched yeah. King Von die, yes, so that too. A retaliation is not surprising, but it's just really sad that Dirt got caught up in that, mm -hmm. especially at this point in his career. I feel like if it happened earlier, mm -hmm. we'd be like, "Oh man!" But now it's like, "Damn, nigga, you yeah. was really out the trenches." Yeah, like, like he's one of the, and not that he sells crazy, but he is one of the one of them, bro. B tier, upper tier type rappers he's of one the. Of them. This generation, so mm -hmm. his longevity has been amazing too. Yeah, you know, he's he came been around out for so yeah, long. A so minute. fucking He long. came out in like two thousand. and all. Yeah. yeah, he came out like two thousand. He used to have a Caesar cut, like. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and he was with his uh, baby mom. Yeah, yeah. Man, we, we went through so many eras with Dirk. Dirk, like the like the uh, when he was dating Days Loaf, and they made yeah. Shawty my beyond. <laughs> she my said shit. free mind. That's my shit. You saw her tweet this. out free mind. Uh, I didn't see that. That's hard. Yeah. Wow. Everybody was dragging her like, what you mean yours? India right here. Wow. <laughs> Messy. But yeah, man, it's fucked up. So definitely, um, you know. Do y'all think he's getting life? It's not looking good. They're going to make an example out of him for sure. It's not looking good. And like, I, I was reading the murder for hire thing. Mm -hmm. Like what usually comes with it is like life or the death penalty mm -hmm. or some shit. Like, yeah. Nah, don't kill him. Yeah. They, they're not going to kill him, but he probably will get. 25 to life. Looking good. Yeah. It's not looking good at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Prayers up for him. And we saw, and there's another uh, lawsuit against OTF and major labels. FBG Ducks mother filed a civil lawsuit against OTF. Um, oh, well, we covered that. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I think Ducks mom, I, she's like, I understand that she's a mother grieving, mm -hmm. but the content creation and all of, like the PSAs that she be putting out are just kind of confusing mm -hmm. and can be perceived as like borderline clout chasing. Mm. Even with this lawsuit, mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. oh, what funds are low? So you're doing this, even mm -hmm. though she has a point. Right. Like the labels are basically funding all of this violence and shit. So like she has a point, but like, I don't know. I I I grew up in the hood. I I see hood mamas. Mm -hmm. A toxic mom can do more damage than an absent father. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all yeah. I gotta say about that. It looks like she's sliding for duck, but like in the way that she's saying, mm -hmm. like it, it, it's, it's getting kind of. I don't even want to say gimmicky, but like, yeah, it's like she because she has a point, but it, it is very. Um, Basically, like, like what you just said. If she behaved like, more like Pop Smoke's mom, it would hit better. Yeah. If she's more serious, mm -hmm. trying to do change, do yeah. positive things, do community outreach, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. It doesn't feel Duck's like she's mom, trying to be famous. As, yeah. yeah. Like and Duck's mom's trying to be arguing somebody. with ops online. Like, like it's you getting crazy. cringe. That's, you look insane. Right I would here. haunt my mom and her dreams if she was doing that shit. Like, stop it right now. Yeah, that's corny. You're embarrassing me. Like, why are you? <laughs> yeah, that's corny. Yeah. You know, obviously, though, you don't want to be insensitive to someone who lost someone but and you can't necessarily tell someone how to act in when they're motivated by that loss but i definitely do see where y'all are coming from and agree to a certain degree in terms of like how things look and how they're received perception um so yeah, perception is, is everything so we will see what comes of that but uh yeah very very messy it's like i don't know i wish i i wish i had more to say but it's just like that's just a fucked up thing for Dirk to be involved in um you know it's 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 wild that the thing that like really kind of made him who he is and what people came to love him for is the thing that is ultimately ruining 
r- ruin his life. And it's, it's like, you, know, you don't want to take the blame away from him, but it's just like, damn. The double-edged sword, like Will said. Yeah. It's On a positive sword. note, it's cool to see Chief Keith live a soft life. Yeah. Did, in the did, midst did, of all this. Didn't he get like kicked out of Chicago, though? Yeah, he was banned. Yeah, he's banned from Chicago. He was, Chicago, a, bad, he was so. a badass kid. Yeah, that, But like the fact that he's alive no, and living his amazing. soft life right yeah, now. As being one of the innovators. Of yeah. That. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Beautiful actually. to see. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys ever heard this, but it's very true. He's, um, I know he's autistic, too. Jay. All these niggas is autistic. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's crazy. Holy they shit. Holy shit. shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. In, uh. Wait, wait, hold on a second. But yeah, okay, back to my point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yo. Yeah, Keith, Keith is yeah, Keith is on the spectrum, but it I say that because it is tight how he got out mm-hmm. and he really kind of just did his own thing. Yeah. Got video games yeah. and Started and just got cars and yep. took his niggas out there and all he did was get high and do that, which is <sighs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, lesser it's like, of two evils, I guess. Or, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's an instance of like something getting popping and then like someone kind of following but taking it f- further, but a little too far. Clearly, like mm-hmm. so niggas follow Chief, hear his lyrics, you know, bang bang, like you know, <laughs> <laughs> all that, like, <laughs> like, like say, bang, bang bang, bang <laughs> all that, like you know what I'm saying, like. Um, no, that was a wild time when Keith came out, bro. Yeah, 2014 bro. was insane. Niggas was locked like, in, bro. Like there was a lot of niggas' lives changed mm-hmm. from like Keith. They either went like they either like took the music for what it was and like, oh, this is tight. And a lot of niggas took that and turned that into their life. Bro. And it was I know like, someone, and he's from Flatbush. Mm-hmm. Like he'd be niggas, like G for everything, bro. You had niggas in Englewood, New Jersey, with <laughs> the nice homes talking about I'm about to hit a lick on an op. I'm like, nigga, if you don't go get in your Getting your mom's cry a fucking BMW. Say I'm three hundred. Yeah. Go to Trader Joe's. Like right. you, you, you're not like that. <laughs> but At the, all. The, the shit was influential though. It was dope. Like it was. It was Influ- our soundtrack for the football team. But bro. I just didn't take it any further than that. Nigga, I'm not signing no ops. Like who, who am I? Like fuck. My name is Armand. Like <laughs> that's, that's a Hebrew name, bro. Like I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Keep that shit away from me. But yeah, that is that's that. A so <laughs> it I is. Like, I'm like, wait, it is. It is. It is. It means. Uh, means castle or chestnut, but I tell people castle because that sounds cool. Yeah, so. sounds more yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. I ain't no damn nut. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. Moving on. Um, brand deal. Meg uh, strikes again. Meg Thee Stallion mm-hmm. starred in the True Religion holiday campaign. She was in there with uh, the guy you don't like, right? Huncho? Did, did, <laughs> was Huncho in there too? I think so. Yeah. I barely see him. Yeah. Because he's unoriginal. Everything about him, even his face. Wow. Well. Smoked him. God damn. What, is his, who, 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 what, is he, what does his face look like? Squidward's house. Oh, my God. So that's why he's not original, because it looks like Squidward's house? Nothing about him is original. His stage name, his face, his sound, nothing. Mm, Get bro. him out of here. I don't listen to him, so... But, no yeah. one does. Yeah. They're fucking paying the neighborhood talk to post his fucking music every day. Give it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Meg working with True Religion, she called it a full circle moment. Been a fan of the brand since she was a kid. She was very excited to bring in hot girl holidays, as she called them. Looking at the clothes now, look pretty nice, especially on her. Um, that looks good. I can't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, She's she, like she was fine when she debuted, and then like she she been in the gym, like grinding, like now now she like slim thick, like yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Or as Fab called it, thim slick. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah. So salute to her, and you know, salute to Huncho too. Even though Miss Two Bs don't don't the like the people him. was mad because they felt like Sexy Red should have got it. I'm glad you said that because I could have sworn the other day I saw Sexy Red repost something on our IG story where someone was like, "Sexy Red's the one who really brought True Religion back," and the whole dynamic there is interesting to me. Like I know you're you're kind of the the women beef consultants. I'm actually gonna bring this to you. Um, Cause I remember when like Lotto was wearing true religions Mm -hmm. and people thought she was trying to bite off sexy. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's interesting because Lotto and sexy red are cool, but then like sexy red's also cool with Nikki. As far as I know, Lotto is obviously not good with Nikki at all. And like Meg is obviously not cool with Nikki, but they're they're all like friends with each other, but like have they're some of them up. have have similar ops. Like it's just and I don't like to get too deep into like I stay out of women's business, but as you like, should like just when I see these things, I'm like, it's interesting. Like and again, we've talked about it on the show. Like we have we're friends with people who are friends with people that we don't like, but not me. But I feel like the, 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 this hip hop shit, like 
I would never be friends with somebody who's friends with somebody I don't like. Really? I don't trust your ass. Hmm. You could go over there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't do that neutral playing the fence shit. I really, oh. If it's like real serious, like dead ass, no, I'm not playing with you. She's team pick a side. Yeah, you need to pick a side. 100%. <laughs> Miss two booming. <laughs> 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 that was cute. That was cute. <laughs> but no, for real, because I will come booming at you. Hey, All right. Go. So yeah. There we go. But yeah, no, and like I, I definitely um noticed uh it too, like sexy wears true religions all the time. I think at 21's party, her and Lotta were wearing them. So it, it doesn't shock me because then at the end of the day, Meg, I called her brand deal Meg. Like all for for all these years, she gets all these partnerships. If they're coming to find a woman rapper, someone who's marketable, someone who is always talked about, like they're gonna go to Meg. So while it probably would have been a, a dope look for sexy, like can't say I'm shocked that it didn't happen. So Yeah. And you know, I love that people are rallying behind sexy mm-hmm. because like they did it when Tyler won Best New Artist mm-hmm. at um I think the Grammys or BT Awards. I forgot which award show. Mm-hmm. And then now again for this brand deal that they feel like should be hers. Yeah. But like I remember Cardi speaking out recently about um, an opportunity that she received that fans were trying to say, no, 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 no. She was speaking out against um, Ray Monte. Mm-hmm. He's a, a TikTok influencer mm-hmm. who oh, yeah. people are constantly like critiquing because they think like he's so ratchet, but he's getting all these opportunities and deals. And like, he compared himself to Cardi B saying like, you know, she was able to be ratchet and still see success and get all of these deals but then cardi spoke out defending herself saying like i had to clean up my image yeah, which she did i had to clean it up and she did we saw yeah. it she fixed her teeth mm-hmm. she's not as um you know reckless as she used to be mm-hmm. so i do think that if that is what sexy wants because she seems content mm-hmm. i can't speak for her um she seems content. She seems like she's making her bread. Sis never even took maternity leave. Like, mm. she's been performing nonstop with a belly, without a belly. Yeah. Performed with Jamie Foxx mm, after yeah. sampling his shit. Like, the girl's mm. moving. She got Chief Keef, mm-hmm. Mr. and Mrs. True Religion. Like, they lit. Mm. But I don't know how marketable. Like, I don't think people are, you know, they're they're ignoring the obvious. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. and she is, <laughs> she's, her selling point is that she is so herself. Like, you, you love her or you hate her. But she's... She hasn't changed who she is, like the tats, the piercings, the the vulgarity, all that. That's she don't even brand. wear makeup, right? Yeah, and 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 it may, maybe a little lip gloss. I've noticed that. I, That's I, it. Yeah, I, and then the I, lip I, gloss just, names are wild. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, she has her own uh, lip, lip gloss yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, know, I've, I've, wait, I've, I've heard wait, the names. Wait, wait, what's some of the names? Gonorrhea, <laughs> chlamydia, <laughs> discharge. <laughs> But this is the girl. <laughs> this is who they want to oh. get a Grammy and to get these deals. Like I thought she would have got like a glasses deal or something at some point because a lot of girls in the hood need to see all these. All these niggas are autistic. Yeah, I, what I said. What I said. Oh, hold on. There's more coochie, right. coochie juice, blue balls. Like it get it, it's we. We are so lost as a community. Holy shit. Like, I hate to sound like Claire Huxable, but she be too raunchy for me sometimes. I mean, her feature on the... Um, Black History Month might get canceled this bro, year. Bro, look, man. Next are, year. Next year, yeah. It might... It, shit. It, because the niggas are buckets. <laughs> Holy And I, and I fuck with sexy. Niggas know I fuck with sexy, but this is crazy. She when said, she put that out, I was like, that's why I don't like her. <laughs> she said gonorrhea. And like, why? 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 <laughs> why? 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 I'm gonna want to put a sexually transmitted disease on my lips, bro? Like, like that, that's <laughs> yo, bro, 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 like, bro. Imagine being in, in the bathroom, well, and then like you, you, you know, how girls talking in the bathroom, like, hey, girl, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Yo, pass me a blue ball. Yeah, like you, you, <laughs> like, you put on lip. Like, oh, that's nice. What's that? Gonorrhea? What? <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. It's like sexy be for real sometimes. Right, like, facts. Like, stop playing. <laughs> yeah, I understand you joking or whatever, but like, if you want this, mm-hmm. you gotta move yeah. like this. Yeah. And it seems like she is very committed to being who she is. A degenerate. Right? And, and it's still working for her. Like, she's getting the WWE look again. Like, that's that's a big, they don't just fuck with anyone. Like, they're, they're very particular. About I'm not gonna lie. It. With social media, these companies have been surprising the fuck out of mm-hmm. me. Yeah, because they, as long as you have a big platform, they will do things that they wouldn't even normally do. Mm-hmm. So I can't even speak. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 
Mm-hmm. Let me let me close this article quick because I, I keep looking at coochie juice and blue balls. <laughs> this is too much. No, too sexy, much. sexy needs to be for real. Like I enjoy her sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like that's somebody who I would be cool with. Like if yeah. we was in school, she definitely we would be, be skipping be school girl. together. Yeah, yeah she, for she'd be the sure. Girl, like she probably sell us weed. Yeah, like, she she probably throw the parties. Like, yeah, she, do she, my hair. Yeah, for sure. Like for sure. But like yeah. I will always be like, girl, why you? Why you gotta act like that yeah, for? Yeah, like, like you know, my mama said that I can't hang around you. Yeah, you couldn't bring her by, by the crib. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, like no, you. Yeah, nah. definitely. She got. She got to park a few houses down. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like, yo, park a, Yeah, yeah. yeah park nah, I ain't coming to no family yeah. events. Nine. Nope. They see no. you. It's about to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah but <laughs> I mean, hey, she's again. She's doing well for herself. Like she gets the looks that she gets, and I, I really do think people love the authenticity of her and like the like. People don't know themselves. Fuck man. it. Like I'm I'm I'ma be me and do me. And perhaps she takes it a few steps too far in the name of entertainment and performing. Because she is a performer and entertainer at the end of the day. But it's working for the people it's working for. So. These are things women regret at some point. Sukiana's talking about regretting behaving that way. You mm. don't see her do those things anymore. Mm. And that's something that that will always follow you. Like Suki's trying to do a rebrand on the reality shows that she's on and she's like struggling with the fact that no one would let that part of her go like mm. of course not she was another one who used to go a little bit too far for entertainment and right. it's just that shit don't be funny sometimes I do remember months ago um, Kaya was like calling out Sexy Red for like her music and she was like yeah like I made my, my neck my back uh, or, or, or was it Khalees with Milkshake I, th- I think it was Kaya Think, Kaya sounds she's more vocal than Khalees yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Kaya where she was like these girls now like they're just being hoes like, just like, being hoes. like it was like at least us in our generation we had like some like you know kind of uh, what's the word like they what? just being hoes yeah, they like, are just being hoes I, 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 I don't remember her exact words she was like, like in our day even though even if we were being lusty we had some like regalness to us mm-hmm. some like you know mm-hmm. some 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 sophistication mm-hmm. for the lack of a better word. i'm not quoting her verbatim but she's like these hoes is just ratchet they just out here being hoes it's like, true it was just like my coochie pink my booty hole brown like damn swv <laughs> you didn't even know when they were singing about sex you just like oh shit this song is about sex yeah. or just oh my god i hate to sound like a republican but yeah, yeah yeah no and and That's i'm gonna I'm, be the new thing i'm not clowning <laughs> it either because again I, I do like sexy red's music i think that there is something endearing about you would let your daughter listen to sexy red <sighs> because i need to when y'all be like i like and i like i'll be like hold on are y'all afraid to say y'all dislike or do y'all really like no no no. i, I would tell you if i dislike something but oh, you sure. al- would you allow your daughter to listen to sexy red i have honestly not thought that far but <laughs> i would feel weird not letting my kids do what i did and to a degree was allowed to do by my dad my, my mom like certain shit i i, I wasn't playing around a crib sneak but, and like, do it. but like my dad would pretty much let me listen to musical curses like anything um so for me it's just like i think i think it would probably end up being a conversation like or something to bond over something to like you know talk about but I, I don't think i'm gonna be outright like nah you can't listen to this shit because telling a kid not to do something just makes them want to do it even more you know what i'm saying and maybe take things a step further maybe be out start rapping themselves talking about the, the, they they booty hole brown and shit <laughs> showing it i'm like nah 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 what you about can't. you will you will let your daughter listen to sexy rap uh, yeah radio edits though right yeah kids bop version yeah like mm-hmm. like super like 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 because they still do kids bop yeah oh, i haven't seen kids bop in forever they do i think they do but they do. it's just not promoted as 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 crazy it used to be but yeah i would let i would let them listen to i'll let my daughter listen to it mm. um but like yeah ra- radio edits like non non-explicit music like mm-hmm. yeah that parental advisory would be <laughs> but sexy don't even do that much and make a clean version it's, i know it's literally so it's all like, gonna be bleeped out what, what would yeah i'm gonna say what would a clean sexy red song sound like my my mm, literally like just <laughs> but like, I'm just, like why don't she do that y'all want her to get these brand deals and these awards but she ain't even taking simple steps as making a clean version of her record i think she's just very committed to being who she is and it's either you like it or all you right. don't you take it or you don't and She's been moderately successful being being herself. So yeah, how so, old is she? Twenty five, I want to say. For real? Yeah. yeah her, sure. Yo, these people be looking old. I heard she's kind of wild too. Like not like you know like like she has a good time like crazily and like will leave shit like like I guess 
like dressing rooms crazy and shit. Like wouldn't surprise me. Like she's like a she like really acts like a, a nigga rapper. Like, like would not uh, surprise me at all. Like, yeah. yeah, bro. Would not surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> she's actually twenty six, so, turned twenty six uh six months ago. Mm-hmm. So Aww. yeah. But um, she's a baby. She young. She young. So that may, explains may, a lot too. May, maybe she'll t- turn thirty and be like, Hey, it's time to clean up my act. Rihanna did I'm it. I'm about to be gospel only. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Imagine, imagine a sexy red gospel song, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> Featuring Kanye. <sighs> uh, I'll fuck no. Please don't. It's not far off. It's not. It sounds like some shit that will come out next week. <laughs> stay away from Kanye. Everyone stay away from Kanye. Fuck that nigga. Um, all right. So speaking of Meg, um, she dropped Megan Act 2. Uh, this past weekend, and you actually missed the episode where we talked about Megan. That was when Carrie next one was here. Shout out to Carrie. Um, how'd you feel about her album, and then how'd you feel about Act Two? So I didn't get to listen till today because my Apple Music was also acting up. Mm. Like she said, um, yeah, yeah. I will click a song, and it would just like randomly shuffle. Mm. It was like the weirdest thing happening, and I was just like, Drake and Nicki, leave her alone. <laughs> oh leave her alone. Oh my god, conspiracies. <laughs> Come on now, you know they both in bed with Apple, and that was the only streaming platform that was giving her problems. But that's the Meg I missed. That's the Meg. Mm. That's that's the vibe. She's the H Town hottie right. through and through. Yeah. Um, and I love when she reminds me like why I'm a fan in the first place because mm. sometimes it'd be like hit or miss. But Meg can wrap her ass off. She can wrap off. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I do. Yeah, I, I liked Act Two more than um, the original album that she dropped because mm-hmm. I, I get that she's trying to be this like versatile uh, star, but her pop songs are never good. Mm. <laughs> the R and B ones, if she has an R and B artist on there, okay, cool. But and my mushi like, was cool. I'm not gonna hold you. I, I do kind of fuck with my mushi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, twice uh, on the remix, twice ate her up too. And shit. Like twice went crazy on that shit. They was like, we selling out arenas in the U.S. and all over. Like for a K-pop girl group to rap like that, I was like, oh shit, they they brought up. That shit hard. <laughs> they went crazy. That shit hard. But yeah, it was like when when she comes back to her foundation of rapping. Well, I really like the samples on um, Act Two as well. She sampled uh, um, Get Low, Lil John. She sampled um, other shit that I'm forgetting at the moment. But um, my, my my only issue, and it's been my issue with her, is like very limited flows, very limited cadences. Like it typically sounds the same, just on different beats. But the production here really, it, I, I was at least like, okay, even if it sounds like you might as well be rapping the same verse. Like I'm enjoying hearing this more than I've enjoyed hearing anything else from you. So yeah that's funny because you saying that reminds me of when nikki ranted and said you learn like you sound like you're still learning how to rap (laughs) and i was like damn you (laughs) cut (laughs) in i remember that video because she she did like an impression of meg and it was wanna be bombi wanna be (laughs) pimpser it was the best (laughs) oh my god i remember i remember that shit holy shit (laughs) she i forgot about that she smoked she smoked her real like i I was like those are those evil rants that made me really laugh so bad and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to hell with her. Yeah, no, nah, nah. <laughs> Nikki is nuts. She, she, she went, she went super villain when she did that, but Nikki she smoked it. <laughs> wanna I'm not be going to be wanna be <laughs> <laughs> Um, she also sampled uh, uh, like a G6 that song. Mm. I, I actually thought she did, she did well on that joint. Uh, I, I think I love her Gucci, which is funny because Sexy Red dropped it. Uh, with, Gucci. with Gucci the same weekend. Then you gonna go tag me? Yeah, in. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it was goodies. No, no, not yet. It was goodies. Uh, Rock steady with Flo Millie. I thought that was a really good song. Flo mm. was nice. I really like Flo. Millie. Yeah, I'm a Flo militant. She's she she, she be doing her thing. So, mm-hmm. Flo um, I'm a Flo so yeah, like, like duty. Th- this was better. But then she, she Meg is always good for one song that I just never want to hear again, and that was <laughs> Tyg with Spirit Box. You don't got to do no type of heavy metal stuff. Please, please l- l- leave that to the to the people who do it. You you good, Meg. You good. You, you good, do, love and joy. You don't got to do it. You don't got to. You don't got to. You don't got to fake. You don't. You don't got to fake the funk, man. Like, bro, I For was I, I was this close saying, yo, I actually have nothing really wrong to say about this project that I haven't said before. And then I get to TYG, I'm like, you be trying to do too much. Trying to do too much. Give an inch, they take a yeah, mile. Yeah, huh? bro. That's like, the Aquarius in her. 
Because you're trying to be so innovative. Whatever. She, she a, a Aquarius <laughs> fucking Pokemon. I don't, you, like, you, you don't, you don't got to do none of that. And we she don't love need her, that. She love her, her anime. She does. She does. It's dope. The The cosplays be cool. I love it. The cosplays be cool. But yeah. yeah. Crazy. Overall, Megan Act 2, I enjoyed more than the original product. I was like, damn, like... If only you brought this to the to the to the first one you did, like yeah, it'd be feeling like people be wasting time with these little experimenting projects. Like yo, mm-hmm. just give us the bangers, yo. Yeah. Like yeah, <laughs> and like saving the heat for the deluxe too. It just like because now it's more music. It was thirteen new songs on top of a what twenty one song yeah. album, the original joint. So That's it's more music, and if you got the, and maybe she didn't think this was her best stuff compared to the first album, but like. For me, if I hear a deluxe that's better than the, than the original, I'm I'm mad. I'm like, you should have the the A and R should have been better about mm-hmm. putting all this front load. You front load like in this in this era, but for sure, whatever. So that was that. Um, we got a new album. It dropped today. We, we record on Mondays, so no, not gonna have a full review for you all because we got to sit with it more. It's some very layered music, but Tyler the Creator, Chromacopia um he'd been promoting it for a while dropped a couple of singles and videos i like didn't play all this the singles like it, sometimes i'll do that like if there's an album that i'm interested in listening to i just won't play the singles at all Same. so i get a full experience of it mm-hmm. um and i did that with this and i listened to the album i started my, my day with it not sure this is the type of album to start my day with i don't, I don't know like <laughs> i'm I, I might receive it differently after lunch i might receive it differently you know off a couple of white claws or if i'm taking some illicit substances um but the music was like cool to me i, I only saved like three songs mm. on my first listen i want to give it another shot because i think there's a lot to get into like the the sonics of it you know it's a very tyler album very instrumental very alternative type stuff and then he there's, there's a lot of heavy content he's talking about his father and their relationship and the song take your mask off he's talking about like he got real deep like a nigga who married with kids but was gay on a low and all this shit like just he, he's yeah, getting to he a lot of different the storytelling things. Wait, shocked me. yeah yeah so it, i feel like it's not this is not fast food like this no. is something that i'm gonna have to sit with a little more and take it in um it was funny seeing the reactions to it um yeah i, I didn't even i'm sorry i completely skipped over did you have anything to say about meg <laughs> I, the crazy thing is you guys really said everything mm-hmm. Especially because I was sitting with I was sitting with my girlfriend. She and she said she said exactly what what Eb said. You know, it's good that she got back to the Texas mm-hmm. and got back to where she was from, and that sound what made everybody gravitate towards her in the first mm-hmm. place. Yeah, in the first place. So, yeah, you guys mm-hmm. really said everything. She was in that Tina Snow bag. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's like yeah, and, and like that's that, what people have been asking for um for for years like i i have not seen much universal praise for like any of her albums and like the people who do be praising them i'm 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 not surprised they do because i think they like meg more than they like her music Mm -hmm. like they're so connected to the person and the persona that she definitely is i feel like for me i'm kind of like that too i mean i i I, like her music is cool to me but Mm -hmm. to me how she hits me as a fan or just a consumer her 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 brand side is so like it's just cool mm-hmm. like she's like yeah. yeah she's like she's being known now and like she looks amazing like how we just said she like she great. looks she looks <laughs> it, uh, uh, amazing she like she looks great like, like amazing. she's probably the baddest yeah like it's like that like yeah it's like, getting like that yeah she i think there. she's the baddest Show facts bro for sure facts yeah. Yeah. yeah and the fact that her body's natural too like, yeah it's I like look, it's love that mm-hmm. and she went the short hair and everything it's like yeah yeah, yeah. meg looks great <laughs> um, but <laughs> to, to get back to Tyler, my, my bad. Y'all. No, you good. You good. I, I, no, I was, we have I to like, acknowledge that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely <laughs> no, she, she looks absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. So. Salute to the stallion. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, that's how I felt about the Tyler album. It's something that I'm going to have to sit with more, and so I don't want to be irresponsible and just like give y'all a one listen review because that's not what we do. Right. Um, how how'd y'all feel about it? Uh, same as you. It's not fast food. Um, I like the production on there. Um, who was the first person to hide their features on their fucking album? 
Cause I that wanna, shit be blowing my. I want to say Travis I really say popularized it with Birds in the Traps and yeah. Ignite. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I, I discovered that Bryson Tiller collab like months after the project dropped because mm-hmm. I wouldn't listen to the whole song. And mm-hmm. then when I heard it, I was like, what the fuck? So, and that's one of the best songs on the project, too. The first take is crazy. Me. He smoked that shit. That's what killed me. Bryson smoked that. So I was like, all right, bet. Let me listen to this shit. Mm-hmm. And then um, I was impressed with the features. Like, he got uh, Glow, yeah. Sexy, and Lil Wayne on a track together. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. Sexy actually sounds good in that type of arena I was surprised Yo, very surprised when I, I played that song twice mm-hmm. I chose it for the slide deck and I was just like damn is it like the beat selection mm-hmm. for me with sexy because mm-hmm. I I enjoyed her in that I enjoyed that feature so I was just like hmm what is it I'm not too sure but the project is um I appreciate Tyler for like trying to hold on to the essence of the genre mm-hmm. like it was a lot of storytelling on there like um what was the song where he was talking about wanting to be a dad and, and rapping from both perspectives of like the baby mom? And I don't like, even know. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I ain't even get that deep into the lyrics yet. Hmm, but. Let me see real quick. It was just this one song and I can like literally visualize the lyrics. I was just like, okay, Tyler, I see you. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was the Hey Jane mm. and Darling I like the production for that those one. The two, the, those mm. are two of the three songs I saved. I saved those two and Sticky. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, we back in alignment. Mm-hmm. There we go. But, Sticky, yeah. Sticky's the one he sampled the Young Buck song, right? Uh, perhaps. I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Um, which one was it? I know which. There, there was a Young Buck sample in there. He sampled Get Sticky? Buck. I think it, I think it's Sticky. Probably. I think it's Sticky. We'll see. But we'll we did see the when one listen. So. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see when we play it. But. I. I think you know, yeah. If you just want to listen for me, how I like how this album is going to be received is gonna not tell me a lot, but like you know the whole rap combo and mm-hmm. how people, you know, we talk about it damn near every week. Um, you know, people. Elliot Wilson tweeted today. I, I miss rap because the the top ten dropped. There was no rap. <laughs> There's no rap. Kills me Elliot is crazy. Shit. Yeah. So like you know, I I think the way <laughs> I think the way is is going to be received and like. Cause to me, Tyler's so po- like he's so polarizing now. Yeah. Like you know, his music is is polarizing, and like you said, he's holding the flag for like, I guess the last real hip hop or last real rap type of artist. Yeah. And I don't know to see some of the reactions, people saying like, "Oh, this shit sucks," and this and that. <laughs> but it's like, bro, you was there. Niggas for- was smoking. Up. I was like, bro, <laughs> but like it'd be like niggas that were there for Flower Boy and there for all those. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. cause I'm not really a big Tyler listener. I can't mm-hmm. lie to you. Like that's just not. Yeah. That's not my yeah. thing, but he like you know I respect it. He's cool. Like he's he's been out for a minute too. Yeah, a long so, um, yeah, just to see how people are receiving it. Like, yeah, because yeah. a lot of people think it's trash, mm-hmm. but I don't know. This used to be the standard. I don't yeah, like. facts. That's what I'm saying. Like it used to be like <sighs> oh like this is like that's why I'm like damn like me like what do y'all like? Some I that's what I'm yeah. somewhat. Like I, th- I think I think his rapping ability and being so rooted in hip hop was a standard, but this definitely is very alternative type of rap stuff too. Yeah. So like, I, I get why some people like Tyler's views a weird nigga, and so some people like, I want to hear I want to hear that weird shit. Like niggas don't fuck with the they put the weird label, on. and I get it because that's how I felt when he first debuted. Um, but Same. I've I've grown to like him over time. But yeah, he's 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 definitely very polarizing. I think. And we've talked about the fan base that he has empowered because he does have a lot of white fans. Um, but I think he's also empowered some very like, and we've talked about this on the show before, some highbrow, like very, <laughs> very like judgmental, condescending hip hop fans too, where it's like, this is the standard. This is real rap. You niggas making shit below this. We don't even want to mm-hmm. hear that. Turn that shit mm-hmm. off. So, mm-hmm. so I, think, I, I think it's another situation where the fan base makes people resentful towards Tyler. I mean, and he's also very vocal too. Like he calls the the Ians and all this this new shit trash too. So he holds himself to a very high standard, which makes people you know reject it. They're like, no, I'm not gonna fuck with that nigga. So I think just there's a combination of things: the era that we're currently in, the down year we've had in hip hop, Tyler being on the West Coast picking his side. Like there's just so many Wait, different things. He picked two. He, he he was on the pop out stage. <laughs> he was. He was on the pop out stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he had his own set. He he performed uh, Earthquake. Nigga, I'm not fucking around. I was like, he's on that stage. I'm just reporting the facts. You and LeBron. You and LeBron. Anybody on that stage is an op, huh? Now, I ain't gonna front. 
that is type oppy on Tyler's end because he did bring out Drake for Camp Flognog and defended to replace, him when he got booed to replace Frank Ocean. I think. Yeah. Uh, so Frank was never advertised. Uh, I, I think. I think. I don't know what the situation was. Maybe Frank was supposed to be there. Yeah. Drake, no. You Drake know what it was. Someone. They advertised a, a surprise guest. Everyone assumed it was going to be Frank. You sure it was a surprise? I think yeah. someone yes, dropped. Yes. No, it was it was supposed to be a surprise. Yeah, it was, it it was, leaked. Oh, it, it was advertised okay. as as a surprise. And then and they were not happy with the surprise. Yeah, now. yeah. And it was like <laughs> Tyler was like, Yeah, I'm a genuine fan of Drake's. Like I wanted to hear Feel No Ways and Wu Tang Forever Live. And then Drake gives him those songs. Drake performed like a bunch of his popping shit at the time, God's Plan, and Money in the Grave, all that. And niggas, them flognaw kids was angry. That was actually the first moment that I was like, yo, is he falling off? That <laughs> was uh, that was the conversation for a lot of people. Yeah. That was the, I was like, yo, y'all booing Drake? Y'all yeah. sick. Yeah, it was it was it was very surprising. But yeah, and, and I know like th- there was some weird shit with both of them earlier in their careers. Like I think some shit on Twitter where they talked about each other, but we thought they had pieced it up. And but I think for Tyler, it's like loyalty to to the West Coast. So, yo, I don't blame them. I'm so New York that like <laughs> I I get it. You yeah. know what I mean, I did appreciate the Monday release though. That yeah. I, I want to talk about that. Too. Yeah, we can like, talk about listening to that shit today yeah. versus trying to listen to it on Friday. Like mm-hmm. I can't six, do it. Six a.m. Yeah. too was tight. Yeah. It was like right when you wake up, it was there. You feel me? Like shout out to Beyonce mm-hmm. for you know changing the game. I don't think she thought that she would have changed the game. I think she just was just doing her. Mm-hmm. But like. Get back to the Tuesday release, like the early week releases. It, it's great to live with something during the week, and then when the yes. weekend comes, you you know what the banger is, mm-hmm. like you know, and just I, like New Music Friday has become this monster to where monster, it's bro, it's playlist, too much, bro. Everyone has a New Music Friday like, column. Will, will, my nigga, it's will, nuts, bro. It is nuts, my nigga. I'm trying to tell you, it yeah. is nuts, bro. And we're supposed to, you know, like give a little insight. We're supposed to turn in. We're supposed to turn in the playlist every every week, every mm-hmm. Friday. And you know how much music comes out? Yeah, it's overwhelming. And but like also in these regions that I have to cover. Oh my god, my nigga! Mm-hmm. I live in New York City in the East Coast, bro. It's so Mad many clones. A lot of bro, music and so a lot of much. genres. Yeah, too. a lot like, of like you just like. The entire landscape, yeah, bro, and it it, it 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 it's tough. And new music Friday, like sometimes I don't turn, like I was about to turn my shit in today, like Monday. Like sometimes <laughs> I update it on Mondays or yeah. like update it on different days, just because it's so much. Mm. And to like c- cipher through, you gonna miss like so much shit that's yeah. good yeah. or so much shit that's bad that you just throw in there because you think it like oh, and everybody named Mama wants a you know a spot, and yeah. and it's kind of it's just crazy, bro. It's and I I used to be the guy every Thursday midnight, no matter what, whether yeah. it was Drake, whether it was artists I didn't care about, but I was like, oh, I'm I'm gonna tap into their shit, give them a chance. Yeah. Thursdays at midnight, I was listening to at least two to three albums before I went to sleep. Same. Seriously, that's yeah. why we were in love, right? Yeah. We had to write about it, mm-hmm. had to have our opinions already yeah. formed. Like that was a different time when yeah. I still loved it. Yeah. I still was, like, you know, I woo. was that that was that was the fan in me, and even though I was writing, I was a journalist. I didn't have the responsibility of covering things. Yep that dropped immediately like having a new music friday review or whatever exactly. now it's like bro typically thursday nights I'm, I'm outside like i'm i'm like if, if if i do check something out it's singles and it's in my uber ride home like i'm not i'm not i'm not tapping into albums and on the timeline giving you live reviews in the moment nope. and then fridays not gonna cap like i pick what i'm putting on, on the vibe new music friday column i listen to those i write about them unless it's an artist i really love I, I I don't listen to new shit on Fridays anymore because it's, it's so overwhelming. Like it's just it's very overwhelming. It's ridiculous, it was just bro. Me. Yeah, nah, no, nah. it's a lot of people, I bro. I felt bad because you know we podding and we got the slide. No. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, I yeah, need yeah. shit to put, but I'm dead ass stuck in yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, like so I'll I'll look through the releases to see like, all right, what do I want them to listen to for us to talk about? But besides that, I'm not. I'm definitely not actively playing, bro. I used to play every like. The 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 fucking Apple Music section where it's like new, the the new releases, you play everything like like yes. the singles, like just let it play out. Just scroll through, see like w- w- which names I know or which names I don't know, but I'm interested in like, and that's how I discover some artists that I listen to to this day no, by thanks. Apple Music pushing certain people. And you scroll through the albums list, it's like all right, download that one, download that one, cue it up. Like I was I was really tapped in, but now nah. So I really appreciate artists dropping on other days, giving me Same. time to consume that by itself that being my priority i think like in like 2019 gold link put uh his album diaspora out on wednesday and i loved that and it happened to be one of my albums of the year that year um there's been a couple artists like recently who have done the 
non-Friday releases, and I appreciate it so much. It's it's great. It's great. So yeah, Badass. it was refreshing. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to Tyler for that. Yeah, I I I wish I didn't start my day with it, but <laughs> like <laughs> maybe maybe by like lunchtime I I, I should have played it, but I wanted to give myself enough time with it, and then the day kind of got away from me. But yeah, I don't do uh, hip hop before noon. <laughs> That's, that's, that's only 70s and 80s R&B I respect that I yeah. respect that I definitely love the mornings where I, I start my day with gospel music I'm like I don't want to hear n- none of this yelling cussing none of, that. none of this shit let me put some Kirk Franklin on some yep. Donnie McClurk in let me, let me run that but yeah, yeah shout so. out to mom big facts big facts <laughs> big facts but yeah so you know congrats to Tyler um, I, I'm definitely interested in seeing how this performs in this year where big names have not gotten the numbers necessarily I'm um, interested in seeing what, you know, some of the other journalists, what their reviews are going to be. Um, the timeline has been very funny. Someone said he should be like ASAP Rocky and just model permanently and stop putting music out. I was oh like, that's God. crazy. <laughs> I, I think ASAP Rocky should do that too. But. I ASAP for sure. I'm like, Tyler's actually talented. So yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about all that, but the timeline's Damn. been very funny. People are tough out here, man. Very tough. Very tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I totally get why I punch. Yo, did you guys see? Um, oh, Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> and I don't want to laugh because I because I actually know know this guy. Um, so there was a journalist who tweeted um, Punch's tweet about journalists being trash. He talked about it in therapy because it made him that upset. And then he tweeted about that. And then Punch quoted him <laughs> and said, Wow, um, so a couple of people have sent this to me, and I, I was thinking about it. My tweet made you so upset that you talked about it in therapy. Think about how the artists feel mm. when stuff is written about them, and how they have to, um, you he know, hate that. And I was like, honestly, <laughs> nigga, not wrong. He like he, he wasn't wrong at all. And like again, I'm mental health advocate, therapy for a- almost ten years now, so I'm not making light of someone who was so upset about something that they had to go to therapy for it. Nah, that's OD. Nigga. Feels a little extreme. I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah, lie, a little yeah. extreme. Like, I don't bro, know. wait, I know them. Uh, wait, do you... you might, you might know him. I don't know if you know him personally. We've probably seen his tweets before. Oh, uh, because I don't want to go in. If I do. <sighs> Who is? I, I don't. I I don't want to go in either. I, I when when I first saw this, tweet, I was like, damn, like really, like it it, it affected you that much. I'm sorry. Man? If like... I was punched, I would have quoted you like, tell your therapist this. <laughs> SMD. Oh, because <laughs> for me, I don't know. For me, it's just like. Okay, <laughs> I, I I didn't take what Punch said seriously because I know who I am as a journalist. I'm not trash. I, I do this shit the right way. So th- the bullet wasn't meant for me. <laughs> like that's like I'm not walking in front of a bullet that's not meant for me. And I feel like niggas on Twitter do that. They walk in front of bullets not meant for them, and then they get offended. So again, I, I all get, the time, they get clapped. all the time, niggas get shot. Yeah, Ow. like so I I don't want to make light of of the guy who tweeted that. Like. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have tweeted that myself. But um, I wouldn't have told my therapist shit. <sighs> be- I'll be talking to my therapist about things that, like, I don't know. I like. Well, we talk about random shit sometimes. Like, if something is worth me like having a second thought about, I'll bring it to him just because he kind of opens my mind sometimes. Like, he'll ask me a question and lead me in a direction that I, I didn't even think about. So, like, I'm not mad at it, but. For again, like, cause the the writer himself is is good. Like, he's actually a good writer. He's talented. He's gotten great opportunities. Like, years ago, you doing interviews. Yeah, yeah, he's he's done interviews. Yeah, um, like years ago, I met him. Like, he was someone who I would reach out to to get feedback on my stuff. Like, he's he's older okay. than me. Like, he's he, he's a vet. Like, okay. n- niggas know him. So I was just like, damn, like, you like that, that tweet really affected you? Like, shit, but. Everyone has different tolerance for for things, so I'm I'm not going. I mean, if he's a vet from the print era, I could understand mm-hmm. why you would need some therapy for that because um, what it is, what it has become now mm-hmm. versus what it used to be during the print era yeah. is insane. So you know the, that's a good point. Perhaps he was upset about when he looked at the field, like mm-hmm. yeah, the, which so mm, maybe it was a broader conversation, and he couldn't just add that context in the tweet because it's only like a limited yeah. character. Yeah, but. Yeah. Punch made a great point, though. He was like, "Yes, you know how? Imagine how artists feel." And it's like, you know, you're right. Like even when when I do my new new music Friday column, I I mean I keep I keep, I keep it a book. If I like something, I like it. If I don't, I I say why. And I'm like, hmm. I wonder if like one day an artist is gonna read my, my review on the column and like have smoke with me because I'll be I'll be, I'll be keeping it a book. I'll be like, yo, this is boring, or like this this shtick is getting old, or like mm-hmm. whatever. Like I, I I keep it honest. 
and some artists don't like being critiqued. So no. Troy Ave had smoke for me. Really? Yeah. I can believe that. <laughs> That's crazy. Troy Ave had smoke for me. Troy be on go. He said that I was, um, you know, feeding into that narrative that he's a snitch. Mm. And I was on some like, I reported that you're taking the stand and you are. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> you reported the truth. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, yeah, I said, I, and he, he tried to threaten me with legal action. And wow. at that point, I puffed up my chest. I was mm-hmm. like, all right, little McMillan energy about to uh-huh. come through this shit, man. Yeah, like, yeah. you fucking with the wrong one. <laughs> now you really are, like, I'm not even scared of you right now. You yeah. should actually be scared. You're trying to you press you, charges? Or try to pump, like, you know when someone, I think he was just pump faking. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. defamation of character type shit? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's what he was trying to do. And Get I was just on some, like, I reported what's about to happen. If you'd like to schedule an interview and give me a quote on it, mm-hmm. then we can do that. But I'm not deleting anything. Yeah, and then we actually... when you report on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the and then we did do an interview, and then we ended up squashing mm-hmm. it at the end. But I was like, don't threaten me, sir. <laughs> we both from Brooklyn. You know how that get. I get it. That's why it's like... I, I punch made a very great Valid. point with what he said. Like, like end the conversation after that. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> at first, I was like, "Damn!" He, he kind of just like stomped on the nigga, talking about his mental health. But it was like, did, did he lie? He didn't lie. The artist faced way more scrutiny than mm-hmm. you do, and then here you go, just digging like, "Yo, this shit is dirt." Just stop fucking rapping. Delete that hard drive. Yeah, and I honestly <laughs> think um, journalists need to, we need to have tough skin, like in in, in the field we're in. Like we deal with publicist artists who are very you know standoffish like you gotta like I, I remember my first interaction with an artist that wasn't like all that pleasant i was like damn like that's is, is this is how these people are do i want to do this anymore and i was like no nah, this this is just normal this is how these niggas are like just you know get get, get done what you got to get done as long as mm-hmm. the work is good like you don't got to be their friend they're not no. there to be your friend so yeah i think like you kind of have to develop that tough skin in this field so interning for angie martinez made me not want to be friend artists mm-hmm. Because there was a lot of things that was happening in the news that she just did not want to report on because she had a relationship with them mm. versus Wendy mm. Williams. She ain't give a fuck. Yeah. She's going in. She's saying whatever the hell she needs to say. I'm not saying that that was my preference, but just the different in approach. The difference in approaches is why yeah. they both are where they're at. Yeah, personal relationships sh- should never hinder I gotta, you doing what's right in the job. Exactly. I got to look up some like legendary Wendy Williams interviews. Oh, do you have, like give me yeah, give me some links after this. Like give me some like <laughs> they're because, all legendary. I mean, because like yes, yeah, like it's, it, especially it, the radio ones. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's why I want to that's why I want to see. I want to see the radio ones because like in Ohio, bro. Like before, not even before school. I think coming home from school, my mom would be sitting down watching the William Wendy show. Mm-hmm. You know, in Cincinnati, Ohio, like mm-hmm. which is you know, but. To me, Wendy was just always big. Yeah, yeah national but, syndication yeah. will make you feel big. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. she was always big. But I, 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 I have never tapped into like the young Wendy Williams that like, yeah. like some of those radio interviews you're talking about and stuff like that. I gotta, I gotta tap in because nah, she is she a was, legend. Yeah, yeah. She legend, ruthless. Wow, we took we took Tyler the Creator all the way to Wendy Williams. We are a special podcast right here. <laughs> Let me that, tell you, I think that reads. That Let me reads. Tell you. Tyler fucks with Wendy, right? Because if Wendy was reporting on him, she'll be like, "Clap if you care." Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not wrong at all. At all. Uh, last thing on the chat tip: um, new track from Forty One, Kyle Rich, Cash Cobain, three of my new favorite acts. Track closure. Um, I really like this link up because I think like 41 and Kyle Rich do more of the aggressive type drill sonically, but they do talk about women and a cash, obviously sexy drill. So bringing those two together sonically, when I saw the name was like, oh, this is interesting. But then I listen, I'm like, yo, this works. This shit really works. And it's more like down tempo. I've never heard 41 and Kyle Rich on something this slow. Like they typically were doing the same kind of beat, the dun, 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 like really upbeat type shit. So I was like, this shit work. And Cash, gr- another great verse. So similar to how I felt about the uh, track with Lo Shimmy, where he just like got to rap and show he can rap. Like I think he rapped really well here. So I I really like Closure a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a good song. It's really a good like song. It. I want more. I think Forty One should be bigger. That could be like my Brooklyn bias, mm-hmm. but um, I do think they should uh steer away from the drill sound and explore more other versatile mm-hmm. production and just do their thing because this like the preview that you played for us i was mm-hmm. like okay it sounds fire sure. and yeah. kyle's voice is just so unique yeah but i don't know i want more for them i feel like they got like a young like they got the kids in new york but mm-hmm. it's just not translating past that very niche bubble that's definitely my feeling too like i i because i like them anytime they dropped a single i'll, I'll cover them on the column 
And a lot of the songs ended up sounding just like Bent Part 2, Bent Part 3, like sounded like too similar to Bent. They did one where it was like, I think it was like down in the DMs or something, like uh, and they sampled Party Next Door. I want to say, I was like, okay, this is different. It's different. Like mm-hmm. you get into a more lovey dovey bag, like like, you know, R and B, like, okay, so cool. Like play around more with that. Do do different shit. Remember Kyle did the collab with Meg. Yeah. Even though I didn't care for the I, collab, I, I, I did I like Kyle's it. part better. Yeah. And it was like that's a big look. That's mm-hmm. a really big look. Probably the biggest look, you know, they they've gotten. So no, nah, like, the biggest the biggest look they've gotten is that song with Neil Chopper. Uh oh, like um, that. that's 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 the first time they charted on yeah. Billboard. So oh, you know, wow. yeah, like charting. Oh yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I just saved that. Or, mm-hmm. or what? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I mean, I know NLE Chopper's having a moment. Oh, <laughs> he's a streaming beast, bro. It's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. It's crazy. I'm bro. sorry. Nigga dropping a movie every time. <laughs> Unoriginal. <laughs> every we already have the wash. Mm. Every time I see NLE <laughs> Chopper, y'all not about to laugh when I say this. It's, y'all gonna be like, oop. Mm-hmm. Karen right. gonna go right, back there. <laughs> Every time I see NLE Chopper, I think about him shooting at his baby mom. Oh, I didn't even know that happened. Google it. And the fact that he's even like has this career right now after that, I'll just be like, why? It's because he light skinned and got a big dick. <sighs> Oh is it shocking though? Like, no. like Uzi put a gun to one of his, uh, to someone's gun butt her. stomach. Yeah, yeah, like Playboy Cardi has a history of, like, but like he opened fire, like at a pre- like right. It, it's that's nuts. Yeah. Like the wow. fact that you were able to move past that to me is mm. crazy. But hey, slut me out, I guess. That's I don't a, know. That was a bad bitch. Uh, <laughs> I want to fuck me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Are eating it up oh yeah absolutely they're eating it up it's he, he so even weird tweeted about it he was like yo it's so dope seeing like the lgbtq community fucking with my music i was like wow you like he's he's uh, having a huge moment that i uh, learning that obviously makes me view him a little differently because like prior to that i was like oh he's like charismatic he's cool that nigga's crazy um but he's, he's, he's he shot he, he's, at a pregnant woman yeah, he's crazy yeah, yes he is yeah. but yeah he's i'm crazy. like wait google that to make sure i'm not lying yeah i know I, i'm not i, I just get, want you to google, google that, that myself. <laughs> yeah. no nle chopper was letting that chopper sing at a, a pregnant woman and i just feel like <sighs> there needs to be more safe spaces for women yeah, that's that's pretty unfortunate. Cause that is an insane thing to do. It ain't just hitting, and that even is crazy. Yeah, like come on, what if she died? Yeah, I don't know. I I can't, I can't un like every time I see him. Like you know when people see Meg, they think all the mess and mm-hmm. the drama. Yeah. That's what I think of every time I see him. No, I, 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 it's a hard thing to forget. <laughs> it's a very hard. Thing <laughs> and to the forget. fact that a lot of people don't even know mm-hmm. that it even occurred. I'm just like, oh wow. And you know. I, it's probably something that I did see or hear about, but it's just like also so much happens mm-hmm. and the way that certain stories stick and mm-hmm. others that are crazy kind of just go by the wayside. It's it's mm-hmm. interesting. It's a very interesting science to it. Like Don Tolliver's rape allegations, for yes. example, those just washed away. Uzi gun button washed away. Yes. Playboy card, even though Ig- Iggy Azalea is constantly telling us this nigga is a fuck boy, he's a terrible father. Like he's kind of able to just skirt past it. So it's that's crazy to it's me. Interesting, but hey, it's very interesting. I can't listen to someone who can do that. Uh, I'm trying to think of who who your faves are. Any Chris Brown. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> oh, I gotta watch that documentary. Uh, I think it came doc? out. What the, oh, the Chris Brown one? Yeah. Oh, shit. Shit, I'm going to watch that shit when we get out of here. Yeah, I might have to tap in myself. Low key, because it's a new accuser, apparently. Oh. Well. It's for all the, he made a mistake when he was 19, folks. (laughs) (laughs) Which is crazy, too, because he's done shit since then, too. Like... He, he, like a bunch of abuse allegations and harassment and stuff. Like, he's obviously the Rihanna thing is the, the biggest because of who it is, but like Chris Breezy, as talented as he is, like, he's done other stuff, but beyond that, like, when he was of age and his prefrontal cortex was fully developed. So it's like, my nigga, like, <laughs> like you can't, you can't make that excuse no more. Like, what? oh my goodness. Were you talking about like the fights and shit? No, like stuff with women. Like, like Karuchi has, has accused him of stuff. Like he's, 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 there's, there's stories. It's just the, I got the, something the controversial thing, to like, say about that too. Uh-oh. 
Oh, God, right, I'm like, do we got time? Here we uh, go. We, we got time in here. Huh. I'm not fucking with no nigga who beat a bitch. You that groupied out just because he Chris Brown that you want to fuck with him? You ain't see Rihanna's face on the paper? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not saying that you deserve what comes with it, but I'm personally not messing with a man who has beat a woman and we all know that mm. he beat a woman because what you going to do, beat me next? So, yeah, I'm not going to lie. If you willingly engage with him romantically after knowing that happened, what do you think? You're going to be the special exception? Mm. I mean, the logic is very sound. Very sound. Yeah. So yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so so sorry. The, the, the entertainment space and the way people just like will have like one controversy with one person and then just jump into another relationship and shit just looks so peachy. It's just, I'm just like, wait, do you not remember what happened over there? Like, <laughs> like you get me, you get. So it's like Karuchi, I hear you, but you wanted a name and you wanted fame and you wanted, you know, whatever came with being Chris Brown's girl. Yeah. Unfortunately, that might come with blows, also allegedly. Mm. So, yeah, entertainment space is very, very interesting, but <laughs> especially music. Ugh. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as like as as long as you can make a hit, you could damn near get away with anything Listen. until until Homeland Security gets involved, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> niggas raiding your homes and shit like that, or or if you do anything with children, that is also the children yeah. very very unacceptable. But yeah. um, otherwise, but other than that, it's mm-hmm. free game. Kill a nigga, <laughs> like you can do. You can almost shoot a bitch. Yeah, like yeah, it's insane. lit. Insane. Where the hits at? And sports is kind of the same way. Like obviously, there's a certain threshold, but like. As long as you're nice, like, niggas will keep trying to sign you. Like, Kareem Hunt was on video beating someone up. He's Ooh. starting running back for the Chiefs. Beating a woman up. Starting running back for the Chiefs right now. Like. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. <laughs> us being women. Very factual. Very, very factual. Uh, speaking of sports, real quick. Uh, will and I are going through it. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta get some gotta get some backstory look at their so. clothes look at their clothes yeah so this friday this past friday went to smackdown at barclays shout out to wwe for blessing it um if you guys follow me at armand sather or instagram tiktok you can see my first ever recap reel that i put together it was a process it took me like two hours between the voiceovers the editing and then like I didn't realize Instagram reels only 90 seconds. So I'm 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 thinking I'm gonna just upload the whole TikTok thing I made oh, and no. I'm like, oh I gotta pick and choose Repurpose. what to do. Mm-hmm. And I saved the video with the voiceover. The voiceover didn't play, so I had to do the voiceover over again. Voice over over. Say that five times fast. <laughs> you and your Christ. content creator. Yeah, right? man, man, it's time. It's time. But it's 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 cool to, to put out like uh, I have a friend who like uh does content creation. She like goes to all these restaurants. She she's kinda like a white girl, Keith Lee. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so she was like giving me like pointers like uh, just on what to do with the voiceover and all that and I, but she 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 was proud of me so i felt good i felt good i felt good but um so went to smackdown had a great time i was in the suite drinking like you know i was, I was lit i had, had a good time wrestling shows always a good time i stopped by a bar afterwards to catch the rest of the yankees dodgers game i'm there will when when when, when niggas load the bases up freddie freeman is up I'm like oh we Jesus. We about to strike him out. We good. That nigga hits a rocket <laughs> for the walk off, get grand slam, and just fuck the vibes up, bro. Like, I, I, there was nothing left for me to be happy about. No, nothing left to live for. Like, it was, it was, it was miserable. It's fucking miserable. It, uh, I need a moment of silence real quick because bro. I haven't even talked about this since it happened. But baseball is so crazy because like the plays before that. It was like, oh my God, Atani's up. Everybody's holding mm-hmm, their breath. Yeah. Get him out. Niggas is happy as fuck. Mm-hmm. Then they load the base. Niggas get worried again. Then it's like, oh, we about to get Freddie out. Mm-hmm. And then he hits that fucking home run. Right, like he smacked that shit too, my bro. My blood pressure, my nigga. Yeah. Yeah. I was in there. My heart, my chest. I was almost, bro. I almost fell over, bro. Like that shit was crazy. And like bro. the bar was packed with Yankee fans. So like each time they got a strike, we was yelling, high five and cheering. Like it was, it was. It felt like we, we might as well have been at the fucking stadium yeah. to lose on a walk-off Grand Slam. And that's the second time I've seen the Yankees lose on a walk-off Grand Slam this season. I was at the Rangers game where they lost. Oh, my God. It, was it, at that game? Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. <laughs> and then Saturday night comes, and we lose again. Yeah, that one, that one was hurt, too. No production from niggas. Aaron Judge is a ghost right now. Soto, thank you for... Soto and Stanton the only ones who want it. Don't nobody else... Giancarlos. It's stressful. 
Yeah, bro, it's, it's, it's tough it's right now. But, you know. um, Probably a turnaround, guys. No? So they're in New York tonight for game okay. three. Game four will be Tuesday. So by the time y'all hear this, game three and four will be happening, and I'm praying that we do not get swept. We can't. Yeah, getting swept is nuts. Yeah, yeah. And getting swept in New York with it's all the nuts. energy surrounding things. Like, nah, we can't. I'm faithful nuts. the Yankees won't get swept. I, I feel good, too. I, 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 I think it's my, my delusional confidence. Delusional confidence I mean, has carried me far in life. We so. had them. We had them twice. We did. Like, we did. For real. Like, it's not, not these games have been blowouts or yeah. anything. Like, it's been that last yeah. game. We shouldn't have even, like, want, been close. But we damn near almost won that bitch. Yeah, we about we, to steal it. We gave up three home runs. And then we, we hit two. Uh, no. Uh, Soto hit one. And then Stanton's, like, single that hit the fucking base and mm-hmm. like flew in the air like mm-hmm. so it's like we, we're competing we're just not producing enough so yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping but um we'll see that i'm i'm again i'm not diving deep into it but i i think you know this is gonna be a tough 10 year stint as a new york jets fan um <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be real tough I'm, i might have to speak with management and renegotiate my contract <laughs> and maybe get out of it sooner if this is how things are gonna be like don't, miserable. Wait, don't you wait? Don't you like you pledge your te- like you pledge to teams you sign on sign with teams as like a like a new fan or something like that or like yeah. yeah I've yeah. seen you do that before on Twitter. Yeah. I wait, just you forgot. really do that? No, no, I don't know. It's it, it, I'm, I'm being dramatic, but like, like it's, it's like a joke. But like I was a Colts I was fan. Like, listen, I listen, was a no, joke. listen to this though. Listen so to this. I, I was a Colts fan my whole life. This nigga uh, is crazy. And then <laughs> in 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 December 2022, they gave up a 33 point lead to the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I, I gave y'all 20 years of my life. We won a Super Bowl together. We, we went to one. I lived through the Andrew Luck era. It, it was a blast. I had fun, but I got I to, gotta, I gotta, you know, find somewhere else to go. And so uh, I ended up signing with the Jets as, as a fan, like the day they said they were getting Aaron Rodgers. Damn. C- completely bandwagoning and no shame in it. Like, I want to be a fan of a good team. Fuck yeah. Like, I want to yeah. be a fan of a good team. You signed to the wrong team. Vibes brother. was high. And then I went to the home opener against the Bills. Aaron Rodgers gets injured four plays into the game. <laughs> Terrace is fucking. We go seven and ten that that year. But I'm like, oh, you know what? Shit. Rodgers gonna come back. We gonna be all right. We draft Braylon Allen. Um, we get fucking Devonte Adams. Like ev- vibes feel good. And we we're playing like shit this year. So I'm just I'm just like you know what? I'm I'm not meant to be fully happy. Like <laughs> I, I I I got the Liberty Ring. I got the Yankees in the World Series, and the Yankees go down 0-2, and the Jets lose five straight games. Jesus. A, one of those losses coming to the bum-ass New England Patriots. Jesus. It's, uh, Are y'all 1-6? 2-6. Six? Six. Six. We, we have the same record as the Patriots. Okay. Mm. That's tough. So, it is bad vibes. But you know what's not bad vibes? The Lakers under J.J. Redick. <laughs> Lakers look great. Lakers look great. I feel very good about that. So, <sighs> sir, some things making me happy in this in this time where I need it the most. You need to be held and have, have my bald head caressed. Yo, please. My my my, my tears. You know, and the nice lady with a handkerchief just drying my tears up for me because sports is stressful. Not a handkerchief. Sports are very stressful. She's so. probably yeah. gonna put a fan. Whatever, whatever works whatever just scratch my back for me and tell me it's gonna be okay that's all i need <sighs> anyways um let's get into the word of the week Woo! my favorite part all the right nerd in me loves this <clears throat> today's word of the week is mellifluous <laughs> try, try it say it with me y'all mellifluous 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 there we go mellifluous 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 i i honestly might be pronouncing it wrong so i'm about to go to google and, and have them pronounce it for me mm-hmm. that sounded right mellifluous let's huh Metaphor. I'm about to put that. He's like, you guys are idiots. So so make sure I hear it right. Here we go. So Mellifluous. 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 Okay, it has like two vowels. All right, the second vowel. Is yeah. Okay, okay. okay Mellifluous. So, yeah. this is an adjective that means sweet or musical, pleasant to hear. Mm. So, if I were to use it in a sentence, it'd be like, I love going to the dentist because the music that plays in the lobby is very mellifluous. 
Okay, I could try a sentence. Okay. Summer Walker's last single mm-hmm. was mellifluous, but mm-hmm. I don't think it was single worthy. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 you got one for us? <laughs> like, was, since we're going around the room, <laughs> popcorn sentences. <laughs> um, Class participation grade is on the line. <laughs> I'm, I used to be like, <laughs> me, me, teacher, me. Can you say it again? I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. Mellifluous. Me- oh. Mellifluous. Me- no. Isn't this the second vowel long? Mellifluous. Mellifluous, right? That's how we were saying it the first time, I believe. Do I got to put the headphones on again? <laughs> right? I'm like, real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Triple check, triple check. Triple check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can put y'all's on too. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Mellifluous. Mellifluous. Oh, no. M- mellifluous, yeah. Mellifluous. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mellifluous. mellifluous. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So. Stevie Wonders. Oh, see, I messed up. I messed no, up. You no, you were you wrong. Right. No, no, no. Yo, no, no. Commit. Commit. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder's music is very mellifluous. Yes. There we go. There period. We go. And it is. Word of the yeah, week is expanding now. <laughs> yo, soon we gonna all come in with our own words. Yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, y'all don't know this word. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for our, this week's board meeting, um, as this is our final episode before our mid season break, um, I wanted to do not a full end of year re- recap where it's like top ten albums, top ten songs. What's your favorite feature verse? Who's the MVP? All that stuff. Well, we'll get to that. Well, we typically do an end of year episode around our anniversary where we actually give our album list. But I wanted to make it a bit more personal for all of us as we are three creators and people on different paths who've had different years. Um, so I just wanted to I dropped a few questions here. Maybe th- these will lead to other things. <laughs> Knowing us, we'll, we'll <laughs> fucking start talking about like 2025 goals and end up talking about avocados. I don't know. Like that's that's just how we are. And so, I'm going to be the one to talk about hey, avocados. Hey, I love avocados, so I'm with you. We, we that's could that do Haitian that. shit. Do you feel yep. me? We could do that. Love but, avocado. Yeah, I wanted to do a, like a little light, personal end of year recap type thing. So I want to okay. start with, and we can start with you, Will, the thing you're most proud of from 2024. Hmm. The thing that I'm most proud of in 2024. Now, it's easy to say Cash Cobain and what mm-hmm. we did, but I'm most I'm really most proud of um, the team I work with, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I manage with two other people, Makta and Glenn, and I you know the synergy we was able to create this year and just kind of even the years before is something that I've been really kind of just proud of and one of those things that's like. Yeah, like people look at the success of Cash and think, yo, you like, oh yeah, that nigga, that, that that's amazing. Everything is, but the engine that makes it go is really, and the people, a part of that is really special. Mm. So, very proud of that. Nice. Yeah. Fire. How about you, Miss Two Bees. Um, aside from the obvious, like I became a homeowner this year, but um. Real I did want to, yo, real adult shit. It's mm-hmm. making me miserable, actually. Like, <laughs> I need to, like, pop my nails off and not do them for a while because I'm getting my hands so dirty. So, mm-hmm. but um, aside from that, that's been, like, the biggest thing I've always mentioned. I wanted to work on, like, my emotional intelligence and growing emotionally. Mm-hmm. And I reached out to an old friend who I was completely in the wrong with. Mm-hmm. Like, I was... I owed her an apology and I yeah. reached out and I apologized to her. And a lot of people think I'm like so cold hearted and don't forgive or give apologies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not completely false, <laughs> but I proved myself and those people wrong. And so it's, it's always a good feeling because like walking with that guilt, like it's, it's tough and you can set it aside. You could pretend, you could project and say, nah, they were wrong. But like, Deep down, niggas know. No, when her and I wrong. cried. She goes, yeah. girl, I was going to hit you up. I'm like, you do not have to hit me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I was supposed to hit you up. Yeah. And I'm happy you did not hit me up first because I would have felt shitty. I've actually, I've got someone who, who I need to, I should reach out to as well. Aww. With regards to that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do that before the year is up. But that's dope. That's really dope. Thank like you. those, those, Those personal growth moments. Like, you can make a certain, you know, dollar amount. You can... Post yeah. this thing on Instagram and get a bunch of likes. But those moments where you can look at yourself and be like, 
Mm-hmm. That was really like big of me, right? very mature of me. Like you really feel so good after that. I like, did. I yeah. went. I celebrated her birthday with her. She came over to like my new home. That's like fire. we're we're all good now, and I'm happy that I got that off my chest. That's far. That's far. Yeah. What about you? I think for me, like you know, I and I, I've said this like a couple times over the last few years, and then every year I kind of do things bigger and better, but. I, of course, I get excited about my accomplishments. Like, I, I get to talk to great people. I get to go to great places. Like, and those moments are awesome. And, you know, anytime I see people who I don't see in a while and they bring it up, it's like, oh, yeah, I did do that. Like, that's cool. But for me, it's like, it's personal growth. I think I learned a lot about myself this year. Um, I had a goal. Uh, I said it last year where, um, and this is very, very personal, but um, after me and my ex broke up, I said, I'm going to stay single for a year. I haven't been single for a year since college and I really want to spend this time to like go through that period of being alone and not wanting to be and like, you know, hitting up people just when when you know you're bored, but you really shouldn't be talking to them. Like I want to go through all those emotions and feel secure, feel okay. And now I'm like, of course I have some people talking to, but like there's no one who have identified as like, yo, she could be the one. And I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with that. Like, I'm actually good on my own right now. And I have a lot going on that keeps me from really, like, sitting home, being sad about it. But, like, I feel like even if I, even when I do have that downtime, I'm cool. I'll be on in the crib playing Madden, bro. Like, I'll be Facts. watching sports. Facts. I'll be just, or I'll just be chilling. I'm just like, Facts. I don't need that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, of course, it's always nice to have a companion especially when they live close because i was in a long distance relationship for a while but this year as i really th- progressed through a lot of things and things we t- discussed on patreon that you know i'll leave for patreon yeah 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 yeah, yeah <laughs> go in. check that out but like things that i've gone through where i would lean on the person that i'm romantically involved in i had to go through myself or with mm. my therapist and i made it through so yeah i'd say that that growth where i'm like you know I'm 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 a lover boy at heart, so I I would love to have Drizzy someone, yeah. <laughs> like I, I I would love to, but I don't I don't need it, and I don't feel like I need it. I'm happy, and I for think you. that's the most important thing is getting rid of that feeling of I need to have somebody. Mm-hmm. I need I need I need it. I a lot of it. our parents feel that way. I'm happy yeah. you made it on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's been a journey. <laughs> it was not easy at first. Mm-hmm. Not easy at first. Should get boring. I do. Self self worth and self respect is boring as shit. Yeah. <laughs> but rewarding. Yeah, I'm trying to be in these streets, yo. Like, <laughs> like that's that's where I'm at. Like, the, I have my moments where it's like, yo, I just want to find find me a eater and like, whoa, and like, no, just, seriously, and, and then just <laughs> seriously, I felt that. <laughs> no, like, like no, yeah. I like, no, found and then just <laughs> beg nigga. her to stop. Like, yeah. just 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 come inside like, with please? me. <laughs> you don't stop. gotta be in the streets no more. It's just us. But. Please. Did you just learn me. anything about yourself during this, um, you know, alone time? I think the biggest thing I learned is that I actually do really enjoy my own company because oh, yeah. I'm a I'm very social Mm -hmm. and of course i do have my moments where my social battery runs out and i would force myself inside but it's not even a forced thing it's like if i don't have shit to do i'm okay with that i'm I'm happy with that i don't feel like i'm missing out on anything like so that's the biggest lesson is like i actually enjoy being alone and i think the commitment to doing so has made me not stick around and hope that someone who i identify has red flags like hope that they're gonna change like as soon as i, I see something that i don't fuck with it's like all right it's i'm, I'm out of here yeah I'm, out of here. I'm not gonna waste my time like i see something that i know is probably gonna end up causing our demise but i'm so optimistic i'm just gonna be like i, I, I can change her mm-hmm. like I, I can change her <laughs> so she'll, she'll get better with me no no nope. she's who That's she is and she, you know yeah. what She's gonna be. She's meant for someone else, and mm-hmm. that they're gonna love that thing that I call a red flag. So, yeah, it's it's made me very like. I, I don't want to waste my time. Like that, I think that's the biggest thing. Like I don't I don't waste my time with a person. I don't want to waste my time being places that I don't want to be. And kind of having that that like reservation has opened my eyes up to that. So love that. Those would be the two things for sure. Yeah, it was good. Um. So next. Uh, thing you most want to accomplish next year. We'll start with you, Miss Two Bs. Um, 
next year, I do want to be in my content era mm-hmm. and like lifestyle content era, like my personal shit. Um, like there's, you know, as people follow us, they don't see our old shit and like algorithms and stuff like that. So a lot of my old interviews, like no one's even know that I've done or yeah. anytime the will, uh, the Denzel Washington shit come up again, people be like, that's you. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yep, that was me t- asking about Damson. Mm-hmm. So I want to do that. And, um, just get, make sure that I'm showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a moody Aquarius, and a lot of times my mood or what I have on my plate takes over. Yep. And I would just like flake on things that I've committed to, but I know that a huge part of adulthood is just showing up. Yep. Um, you know, people might not feel obligated to others, but I do value community and like sisterhood and like all my friends and my family and stuff. So, I want to show up. I don't want them thinking I'm too busy or that they're not important enough for me to not show up. All right. Feel that. How about you, Will? Um, I like that end, the end part of yours, showing up. I want to show up a lot more, too, next year. Um, that's one of the things. And then also, I want to uh, I want to get healthier. Mm. Just, you know, working in music, especially the rap shit, doing a lot of, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of late nights, a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking. You just, it's just a lot, bro. Fast and, food. you know, Fast yeah. food. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I feel like you have to, like, live in New York City to, for people like to understand this or, like, live in New York City and working what we work in, it, it, it this stuff really like becomes your, your whole life and, like, mm. you, it's kind of hard to even have outside hobbies yeah. and shit because you be so, drastically tired or just exhausted mentally from everything that you got to be doing working in in this city at how high pace and how high um how highly competitive is like we're at the end of the day we're we're in the place where the best of the best is yeah and this is you know this is where there you can take it to the you can take it to the moon or you can stay on the ground so it's one of those things that yeah i just want to get healthier and, and 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 try to turn the lifestyle around a little bit and then uh get back to taking pictures again Mm. because i used to take a lot of photos and stuff i want to get some outside hobbies back Mm -hmm. instead of just being fully music management Mm -hmm. music shit all the time which is yeah i respect that yeah i think for me um i have like three or four things uh first is i want to get to ten thousand followers on instagram which might sound like shallow no but what, what you just, do it's important exactly like the bigger the audience the more everything goes and i know part of that is like diversifying what i do it's really just like my personal posts and then like stay busy content so i want to do more stuff so like making that real was kind of the start of like all right now i'm gonna like start just like talking about random shit too or just like anything like i wrote an article a news article the other day for work they found a rat on Spirit Airlines flight. On a Spirit Airlines Wait, flight. Wait, what? I would yeah. Die. <laughs> yeah. No. I would he, die. Was, he, he was no. running through like he was running through the fucking like uh, luggage shit? cabin thing. Like someone saw him through I would die. through the panel of like a, a light up there. Did it already take off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it was the, in the, the air. The flight was in the air. Yeah. Oh hell! I no. would yeah, yeah. literally die. Oh, hell I was like, no. yo, this would have been funny to like make some content about, and I just never did it. So. Now I was like, you know what? You was I'm, on that plane? No, no, oh. no. I, no, I just, <laughs> I'm no, sorry. Fuck no. <laughs> Yo, you just, this, is, this is blowing my Yo. mind. Like, crap, that bitch. Yo, he, Yo. Asked, he asked with so much concern, too. Like, he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is because so that's scary. That's nasty, bro. Yeah. And You're it's like, like, what? Look at her. Because, bro, because. <laughs> Cause you got to think about all the jokes they make about spirit. Like you got to fly the plane yourself. You be sitting on folding chairs. I've gotten on on a flight, and the seat was dirty. It was garbage on the shit. I'm like, yo, these things don't even clean the shit right. So it's like finding a rat on a Spirit Airlines flight. It's like this kind of checks out. Like it, it makes sense, but you never thought it would be that crazy. Like yeah, no. So I'm just like, damn. Like this would have been funny to make like a TikTok thing about. Like talk about it for like 30 seconds. Like just like crack jokes on it. I just like a little green screen. Yeah, like I know what you mean. Small stuff like that. Cause like like I said, editing this reel took me a while. I'm sure I'll get faster as like I do it more. But like just little shit. Like just a variety of things. Like I I do a lot of fun stuff that could be content, and I just I don't like having my phone out and recording it. But yeah, if this is the the content creator life is something I've committed to, then I'm just like, let me do it to the fullest and be really good at it. Because 
it's some other people who, who aren't even as personable as I am who have big followings. So I'm like, imagine what I could do if I really committed to this exactly. shit. Exactly. So I want to do that. Of course, definitely want to lock in on my fitness. Like, I am so shocked that I'm not bigger than I am. Like, because me too. <laughs> I eat a lot of like unhealthy shit. Like, yeah. you know, fortunately, I still drink my 120 fluid ounces of water a day. I'm juicing. I, I walk a lot because, like, uh, the Port Authority to my office is like a 15 minute walk. So I'm walking for at least, yeah, at least an hour if I factor in my walk to the bus and then just all that. Like, I, 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 I walk a lot. I do cardio, but very light cardio. But like, you know, I'm I used to be a three sport athlete, so I want to commit to being back in the gym, and I feel like my schedule hinders that too. So it's like making that sacrifice of like, I'll go to less events so I can go to the gym mm-hmm. at night, or I'll. I try to go to bed earlier so I could do it in the morning because mm-hmm. like morning workouts also just like, I feel so good after I do it. Yes. it was, it's been so right hard back. to just I, be consistent. I wonder why my bad not to cut you. I wonder why people don't like working out in the in the morning. That Waking up, yeah, yeah. That, and getting there. That's, that's, like, yeah, that's, that's the literally the battle. <laughs> yeah, that's like, the hardest part. Facts. When I when my five o- five o'clock alarm goes off and I just seeing that it's five a.m. and I'm already about to get up and start my day and it's dope. Like when when I was younger, I used to. I used to have to wake up at 5 a.m. to go to my middle school in Hoboken because my mom would drop me off early because she'd have to come back to Englewood to go to work. Uh, but when, when when you're little, you could do that. Like, like you don't need as many hours of sleep. I, at least I didn't. Like, I could pop up and be be good. Now I, I need my six to eight hours. And I typically go to bed late because I'll be up late watching sports or up late doing work stuff. Like, I'm like, I, 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 I got to make that sacrifice. I'm, I'm turning 30 next year. I would love to like be on a beach somewhere with my shirt off, like feeling good about myself. Like I'm still confident, but you know, stepping on the scale or like seeing that, like I got to get bigger clothes and all that. Like it's, it sucks. It sucks. sucks. Knowing where I used to be. So Mm. like, I want to commit to that. Definitely be, be better financially too. Like just with saving money. Um, and there's one more thing career wise, which I'll talk about off camera, but, um, yeah, that, that too. So yeah, I'm I here saw, for all of it. Yeah, I yeah. saw some of the pictures when you were um, younger in college. When you, I think you're, you're. Uh, he pledged. Yeah, we yeah. had like the pledge stuff. Well, slim, bro, and it's funny too because like they would make fat jokes about me then, and I'm just like, seriously, they were making I, I, fat I would, jokes about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, damn, I wasn't even fat, bro. At like, all. At all. I was yeah. like, bro, like, you were like, yeah, bro, I look good. I was like, yo, shit, man, like, fuck, I gotta get my <laughs> shit together, bro. Like, I still don't even really think you're fat now. Yeah, I, you gained weight, yeah. but like, you still have like that. You have definition, like, yeah. yeah, and like you have a, yeah, and you bro. can get back in the gym and trim that shit right off. Yeah, you know? like that's you the thing. That. When I lock in, I lose weight real fast. I can yeah. tell, like super fast. So it's, I just got to do it. That's mm-hmm. men, period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're very lucky. Right, we're very lucky in that regard. So it's like, all right, man, I, I just need to do it. That's why. That's why Nike's the best. Has the best slogan ever. Just, mm-hmm. do, just do it. it. It's like, really God. as simple as that. Like, just you just got to do it. Uh, you it's can make all the excuses in the world, but it's as simple as waking up at five a.m. and like. People also be like making it real complicated. I got to be in the gym for two hours. You work out for forty five minutes, like Facts. four to five times a week. You're good. You'll you'll get results. So Facts, or focus on certain mean. body parts. You ride, yeah. certain you days. Hop in there, ride that bike real quick. Yeah, go lift some weights. Do mm-hmm. that four yeah. or five times a week. Yeah, because I I I've, you straight diet yeah. is easy for me. Like I I I could cut shit out easily, but it's it's the actual fitness part. So yeah, trying to lock in on that next year. So those will be. It's all very personal. Like, but I mean. That's just kind of where I'm at. I feel, I feel secure career wise. There's definitely a step that I want to take, but like I'm again, I must turn thirty. I feel like it's time to like, yo, gotta be better with money. <laughs> um, gotta like, you know, be more consistent with content stuff, and yeah. So that's where I'm at. Um, what's the biggest lesson you guys learned this year? Whoever wants to start can. Shit. Um. It goes back to what Miss Dubies was saying earlier. Showing up is half of the fucking battle. Mm-hmm. Man, and it, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, and I'm talking about myself, not even a lot of people, I'm talking about myself too. You, uh, showing up for yourself is just as important, if not more important, than showing up for others that you might think needs it maybe yeah. more than you or whatever. Or um, it's, it, it is more yeah. important. Yeah, it, it showing is. up for yourself is more yeah. important. So I think I think showing like yeah, showing up for yourself. That's what I learned, and mm-hmm. showing up just just showing up in life, bro. Yeah, like pretty much. I think my biggest lesson is um, meeting people where they're at. Mm-hmm. 
That's like, huge. I am queen of letting people be. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to say what I what I say, and that is it. I'm not going to try to convince you. I'm not going to try to, like, do anything. I'm not going to try to change you. Like, I'm going to just meet you where you're at. Mm-hmm. If it does, if it doesn't align with me, it'll be removed. If mm-hmm. it does, you know, the proper adjustments will be made. But I, I ain't stressing myself out with people anymore. I'm just meeting them where they're at. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if I have, like, a, a biggest one. I think what I was most proud of was, like, the one of the biggest lessons I learned is, like, I do enjoy my solitude more than I realize. Um, I've, I had the meeting people where they're at realization, like a couple years ago, I've had the just showing up for myself thing a couple years ago. Like, I, cause I, I was that friend who would want everyone around me to be better and Boy. like <laughs> commit to it to the point where like, if niggas wasn't listening to me, I would get upset about it. And I'm just like, yo, I'm stretching myself too thin. I'm, I'm not even yeah. where I want to be at yet, but I'm invested in these niggas betterment. Exactly. And they don't want to be better. It's an intrinsic thing. You have to want to be better for yourself. <laughs> no one can make you better. Um, and so that's, I think with therapy, I kind of realized that too. So yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I have a biggest thing this year. There's been a couple different things I've learned and relearned. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a bunch of stuff, but I don't know. I, I just, uh, my, my, my most recent calls with my therapist, I haven't really like, had much to talk to him about like there'll be some days where if it's something with a girl or something career wise like i'll talk for the full 50 minutes and not even realize all that time passed he's like yo we gotta stop but next week and lately i haven't really had anything that's been like weighing on me to talk about i'm like yo am i at peace like is this peace (laughs) i'm like yo have i not felt (laughs) peace in years like what the fuck this this should feel weird i'm like yo you don't have any questions about anything i said he's like no you're like Cause uh, the other call, he was like, I'm proud of you because you're processing and working through these things before you even bring them to me. So the work that we're doing is impactful. Cause I think, I think a lot of people think therapy is like, you just bring your problems to your therapist. They figure it out for you. It's like, no, you have to practice what you talk about outside of that hour phone call. Like one hour a day, isn't going to change your life. You got to apply this shit every day, like every hour, whenever something comes your way. And so I'm like, damn, like, I guess. The, the the work you've been doing with me is helping because I'm I'm figuring shit out on my on my own bringing it to you and he's like oh so like <laughs> there's nothing for me to say like you figure I'm like yeah I guess so so yeah I love those moments yeah for sure for sure peace is weird <laughs> I'm like yeah this is shit, shit feels foreign <laughs> like what the fuck so yeah, I'm kind of boring but it, boring is good yeah <laughs> boring is underrated yeah very underrated niggas 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 use boring as a pejorative Ooh, yo that one that word is the word that keeps giving that's the one that's the one that's the one but boring can be flipped into yeah i ain't got nobody stressing me out i ain't got no chaos like it's just i'm just living my life living. and shit working so yeah yeah it's up mm-hmm. um favorite music moment of 2024 kendrick and drake beef mm-hmm I guess that, but like, hold on. Right, like that's the most obvious one. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just like, "Mm." yeah. I don't really know. I don't know. Not too many things have moved me this year other than that. Biggest music moment. Mm Hmm, bro. I guess, yeah, I guess the Kendrick and Drake Mm -hmm. shit. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Definitely those thirty minutes uh, when Family Matter was was out, but before Meet the Grams came out, I was on top of the world talking my shit. I was like, <laughs> "We about to win! It's over for these niggas. Use we got me it." As the he don't got nothing but in. Yeah, mm. yo, like we was, we was, we was talking our <laughs> shit, bro. We was just come to find out the the fucking Everybody hubris. Is. Actually, that might be my favorite, bro. Too, because I, that I felt untouchable. Niggas was on top. Boy. My group chat was like, and like group chats that didn't even talk about music a lot was tapped into this beef. So they was like, Euphoria dropped six sixty in L A. And your arm on your boy on the ropes, bro. I'm like, I know Drake. He gonna come back. Family Matters drops. I'm in all these chats talking hella shit, dropping the lyrics. Kendrick's open his mouth. Job, 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 you hear me right job. now? Oh shit, it's all making sense. Maybe I'm printing you actually, Mike. Like, <laughs> now, Family 
matters. Yo, he was rapping. I'm he went crazy sorry, with that nigga. I'm and it's sorry. also a funny <laughs> song. Like he's like, <clears throat> like <laughs> not that type of free. I'm talking about my nigga Dave. Like, <laughs> he focused too much on the Dave free yo. bar for that shit, but that it was nigga, hilarious. Funny ass <laughs> lines on that shit, bro. Mm, that like, nigga Dave free funny boy. Yeah, you you the black messiah wifing up a mixed queen like all that. It's, it's just nah, funny. Drake is a funny it's ass funny. nigga. Petty. Funny. And then meet the grams drop. Like, oh my god. Yeah, that shit was. Like, we have not been active. Like, you see how you said, oh, on Thursday nights, I used to stay mm. up. And those were yeah. one of, that was one of those moments. Yeah. We haven't done that shit in years. Yeah. Niggas yeah. had me refreshing the TL, yep. refreshing I love, YouTube. I love, I, love, I, love, I, I love those moments like yeah. that. Yep. When it's like, when something drops and it's like, and it's like late too. So like, niggas yep. is up. Everybody's up. Niggas, everybody on time, I know they got work at like 8 a.m. tomorrow. And but we are up. Tapped into this shit, bro. That shit yeah. was a movie, bro. Not like us dropped during brunch hours in West Coast time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like, like nigga, like four, out, three, my four nigga. PM over there. Yeah, imagine being out and hearing like we have not had moments my like that. Nigga. In too it was so crazy long. Yeah. So I think that would be it. I can't even think of anything else. I'd say the other thing, um, and again, I was late to listening to Cash, but um, when I saw F- uh, Fisher really catching on, like. They dropped the on the block performance and then the the Reemski videos dropped and everyone was using those. And then I see like niggas in like Detroit posting the shit. This girl yeah. in Cali used it as her Instagram story song when she happening. was at the gym. Like just seeing it you saw really it catch on. Cause remember when his album, uh, or rather his project, um, Pretty Girls Love Sliz- Love Slizzy dropped, I was like, Oh shit, like there's a couple songs on here that I think could go. And they were popping like regionally but they didn't reach the level fisher was and so i think just when as a fan you want to see someone do well and seeing that really take off and that obviously leading into the ice spice remix and rump punch doing pretty well and then like casting up a boogie and um fucking uh the big sean shit recently which is actually a really good song i actually really I like that get you back that's um, <laughs> that's a big Sean. Yeah, man. yo, his, he just be I'm, getting ignored. We, we never talked about the album here. It's Damn, actually, we ignore him too. It's actually good. I'm not gonna front. I did not expect to like it, Big Sean. I'm, I've, I, and I've said it, I've moved on from him. But I went to his. Um, he, he did a listening and he, and he did a live talk with Carl Lamar from Billboard. Mm. And I, I went to support Carl. I didn't really care for for Sean. And honestly, like he wasn't the best interviewee. Carl just did a good job guy in the conversation but he played some records i was like all right these are okay but then i go listen to the album he's actually got some shit on there it's actually okay let me go listen good. to that it's actually it's long that that's that was daunting to me but uh. um it was good but um yeah so i it, it, it's been really cool to see cash catch on the way he has and you know i think a, a mark of success these days is people trying to jump on your wave and mm-hmm. do it uh, like we've said many times a lot of people don't do it as well but in in one year the nigga can say he linked up with fucking charlie wilson big sean a boogie um obviously like some of his, his peers too the, the the low shimmies the the 41s the kyle riches um uh produced on pink panthers and shit although the, the, that was last year that was like around november i think that dropped you can um, you can you can you can throw that yeah in, you though. can lump that because that, like, that all starts with like the yeah, calling for you. Yeah, yeah like, he's, like the run of... 2023 to 2024 for him has been has been big, and um, yeah, it's it, it's just cool to see because again, in this era, there's a lot of people that we see are talented, and they either don't get the push or mm-hmm. or or they run out of gas themselves. They don't yeah. keep the the quality to a certain standard, and Cash really hasn't let me down. You know what? One of the best moments uh for music this year that mentions cash i think the problem thing was hard the problem remix yeah how yeah. everybody yeah. Yeah. i was that remix generator yeah, yeah. i yeah. need to make one super dope by the way damn I, we should have talked about that we should have made one i i, I, I <laughs> fucking wrote an article about it i thought that was brilliant brilliant yeah. brilliant yeah. Sam, i loved it is that sam, sam put that together yeah. that was brilliant i actually commented on his tweet like nah this is fire yeah. and it's it was like, cool too because it was some verses that weren't on the original joint mm-hmm. I, like i saw y'all drop the radio edit with yadi mm-hmm. and um kyle rich mm-hmm. was on the radio edit and then those mm-hmm. verses were available on the generator like, i was like this is dope this yeah is super dope. Like, like niggas ain't marketing no more yeah like, yeah very very crazy how many people so. hit me how many people hit me about that like yo this is the coolest shit ever mm-hmm. no seriously yeah. like Artists are not doing anything niggas anymore. Like, niggas was like, Sam can get a job anywhere if he wants to now after that. <laughs> niggas like, was just, high key. Yeah, yeah for real. Though. <laughs> yeah, like just what up? Because the conversation 
when the song was when everyone was teasing their verses was yo what songs what verses Mm -hmm. are gonna make the song and then some people were disappointed certain ones didn't make it so Mm -hmm. you give them the radio edit with some other ones and then it's like here make your own version like take niggas off take this blah blah blah. that's fire that was brilliant absolutely brilliant Um, we're trying to make something with that fans could upload their own verse Mm. and then throw it in there too okay but you know, but let me start writing. Let me start writing. You about to hear a lot of trash, but it's like, mm-hmm. I, got, I got you. Know, I'm not gonna front that. <laughs> we, we need to make it be able to download too, because we wanted to be able to go download straight to people's phones so they could have it, but um, just have like that little clip and stuff. But Sam, figure it out, Sam. He was working on it. It, it was it was a couple months ago, so I would have to scroll up really far to um to find it. But when the when the double XL freshman list dropped, and we we're t- obviously the conversation is. None of these artists can cipher, and and someone asked what Cash's cipher would sound like, <laughs> so I did, <laughs> I did a Cash Cobain freestyle, to, like in, in a voice note on the group chat. I smoked it. I smoked it. It, it sounded very accurate. I'm, I'm not gonna do it live. It might be Patreon for y'all, but I I, I feel like I, I I I did him I did him justice with it. But um, yeah, That's <laughs> what a moment. Um, lastly, favorite. Overall entertainment pop culture moment. The the year started with Cat Williams <laughs> and, and, and him just setting the tone. Year of hate, year of you negativity. Gonna hate, you gonna hate me, but the pop out. Okay. Yeah, that shit was. I'm, nuts. I'm not surprised. You're you're League of Lamar. Like I, was, I am. Because mind you, I'm like, what can I say that's I unrelated not. to that? I am not. But. <laughs> That was that moment was that moment was nuts. Yeah, that moment was too, like that feud took over everything. I forgot that Cat Williams shit happened this year. Mm-hmm. January set the tone for. I everything. need that calendar that they be posting yeah, yeah, on social. Yeah, 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 like the biggest moment of every month. Yeah, like mm-hmm. so I could know. I'm like, all right, because <laughs> I don't know shit from February. Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, I guess. Uh, Usher performing the Super Bowl, that's, that's big. Oh, yeah. And then March was I thought when her was Northwest. Motherfucking Homeland Security raided Diddy's house. But I wouldn't call that a favorite moment. It was just the, a big the biggest thing that yeah. happened. I don't even... Well, oh, well, April was, you know, the month where shit really popped off. Um, With Drake and Kendrick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was that long ago? Yes. Yeah. Damn, well, we be- <laughs> so we, we yes. don't trust you dropped at the end of March. And then April was when Drake finally responded with push-ups. And then okay. we got Euphoria on April 30th. That was so, eight. No, yeah. time is not <laughs> yeah. real. So leading into May was, you know, 616, Family Matters, all that stuff. So, yeah. It, was, it wasn't even summer yet? No, it was not. It was not. It wasn't even Memorial Day yet. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nah, that Cat Williams moment was definitely top five for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. Especially because he like people are saying that he opened this portal. He did, yeah, yeah. And then he like you know famously in the interview said, "Did he like to party? You got to tell him no." Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> seeing what happened to Diddy after, it was just like, "Oh shit!" Insane. You got to tell him no. The whole club Shay Shay run was a little bit he's, crazy to yeah. me. Mm-hmm. He's been cooking. Yeah, he's been. It's like because I, I remember when I was younger, just why, like he was just a sports broadcaster. And honestly, I, I just thought he like he sounded funny because his accent. Like right. I just I just thought he sounded funny. So then when he popped up on like the show with Skip Bayless like several years ago, I was like, oh shit! Like Shannon's still around. That's cool. And then he just took off like Club Shay Shay, Nightcap with Ocho Cinco. Now he's on first take. Like he's cooking. They said um, I don't know if it was a meme or fake, but they said uh, Kamala Harris about to go on Club. Oh, Shay. Yeah. she's yeah. on there already. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it already I, happened. I, I think the episode is out. It's know? out. <laughs> And she yeah. went on there. It's so funny. That's Out crazy. of all the interviews, that's the one where she clarified that the Democrats are the reason for the fifteen hundred uh, st- dollar stimulus checks. Mm. And I know that was intentional because that's black where people. the yeah, oh, you know, mm. black people. You know us. I I, I, I I saw a lot of people <laughs> questioning why she did that. Like. What does Shannon Sharp know about politics? I'm like, it's not about politics. You she, fucking she's nakers. Going, she going to where the niggas are. You nakers <laughs> like, are saying that she don't deserve the spot, so yeah. she's going in your face. Yeah, y'all not gonna watch CNN. <laughs> You're not. Y'all not gonna watch C-SPAN. Y'all not gonna You're watch not. all these important channels. But y'all gonna watch a, a, a Shay Shay and talk about Shay his, his his dick pills and all that. So he's like, fuck it, let's, let's bring Kamal Harris here. What? Hold he on, really, wait, he hold really on. be talking about that. He talks about anything. Like he's he's he, he's a. He is a he's a very uh open wild, open southern southern man. man. Like, yeah, he he like he 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 brought 
Megan on and had to apologize to her for something he said months prior. He said he was he was gonna have her spread out a little, like like a quarter to three. Like, <laughs> yo, did you see what Shaq said to, to Angel Reese? Shaq is nuts. That was crazy. Shaq, Shaq too horny. That Shaq, was that was Shaq it, it, is one of the it, horniest it, men. It, it, yeah, bro. Some niggas and niggas started telling on themselves too. The bro. way the way people were trying to defend that. I was yeah. like, oh, you got you the creepy uncle. You the creepy yeah. uncle. Yeah, you the creepy uncle. Yeah. A a a no chick uncle? that I'm that I'm gonna say reminds me of my daughter. I'm talking about you in them blue ass shorts. You she didn't say it shorts, once. You, you gotta be dunking. And he, he kept doubling down, <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, <laughs> like, holy, we got it." <laughs> yeah, she was mad uncomfortable. Like, Yo, can we? Yo, can we? you really good at that? <laughs> like them shorts, them shorts you wore. Yeah, she was like, she's like, can you wrap this up, nigga? Because like, why do you remember my outfit like so said, specifically? That nigga said, <laughs> "You and them." <laughs> I can't, I'm laughing. <laughs> that nigga said you in them little shorts. Blue ass shorts. <laughs> I, Wait, do it, do it, do it, please. Do it, do it. He's, he's, he's good at it, gang. He's re he's really good at it. Do it. Uh, no, this nigga no. said <laughs> them little ass shorts and <laughs> dance around. And he said, I'm about to, what, what, what did he say he's about to do to her? He said he was about to, what, what did he say about the shorts? He said something after the shorts, oh, right? Uh, oh, oh, he said something about like she would just make more, more money if she was, oh, okay. if she was dunking. Oh, Duncan while wearing those shorts. That's yeah. nasty, nigga. And then, and then, then he repeated it, and he was like, "You tripping?" And she was like, "Okay, let's, let's move on." Like, Sh Shaq too horny, bro. Yo, horny. like that nigga linked up with the Hawk to a girl. Hawk to another moment. All of us, it's the white people. How is she? Um, like, that shit makes me so. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that was not a moment. It's insane. I mean, like, how know. is she? Pre like, uh, she she got a show now. Like, bro, she's up, nigga. They are. They, they just give deals, money and just, brand deals to, to anybody. Anybody. Yeah, they don't want to give me one. Bro. Exactly. Like, like, we need 10k followers and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just because she said you supposed to spit on the dick before like, you suck it, bro. And I ain't spit. She said hawk too. Like that's like mucus. And yeah, shit. that's like nasty that's, that's ass a lot bitch. of spit. And like you know, there's some people who, who like it real sloppy like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but hawk. Yeah, that's that's. I'm crazy. not even gonna do the sound. Cause yeah, yeah. Don't don't. You, you, Pause, man. You you you, you a grown man. Don't, Pause. Don't do yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, no. I paused myself. He's like, I paused myself. You don't even have to do it. I, I'm sorry. So. I heard you. I had myself. I got it. I got it. Don't um, worry. but yeah, I don't know. I think my favorite entertainment of pop culture moment probably Sabrina beating Travis for, for the number one. You're yeah. funny. Probably Sabrina beating Travis. That was cool. Oh wait. Real cool. Hold on, Nikki. Um, Nikki's tour. Like her successful tour. Great show. And the sales. Yeah, mm. I forgot I went to Gag City. I went during uh, Dreamville. Mm. But uh, yeah, Nikki's tour. I saw they tallied up all the girls' sales and it still wasn't even half of Nikki's sales. You know, I hate to barb it right now, but hey. It's, it's factual barbing. Okay. Yeah. Nikki had a good moment. I loved how she just kept whacking, whacking the people. Mm. Oh, her rant was crazy. Which one? Right, uh, uh, yeah. the, the most <laughs> the Super Bowl one. Yeah, the the most latest one where she was like, um, she said Elliot's breath stink and oh, said yeah, yeah, Steve yeah, yeah, Stout yeah, yeah, dick yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. She <laughs> she stemmed said, from the Super Bowl. She said Elliot Elliot was his breath stink. Yeah, when she say this, <laughs> just now or like uh, recently? She, yeah, in that recent rant when she was going on off on Stephen A. Smith, Steve oh, Stout, okay. and basically anyone who mentioned her. During that time, she went off, and then she said that Elliot's breath stunk. Mm, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. It is yeah. Kind of that was that was funny to me. It is. Nikki Nikki does entertain me sadly. Yeah. She, <laughs> like I said, very problematic person, but she's funny. She's As funny, hell, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna yeah. laugh every time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. That's our light end of year recap. Again, we will have full content for you all before the year is up of our top albums list i can't wait for us to talk about that and some Ooh. of our favorite songs of the year and just all the other good stuff and of course the stay busy anniversary episode but let us know in the comments what's something you're proud of for yourself what's something you want to accomplish next year what's the biggest lesson you learned this year what's your favorite music moment what's your favorite entertainment and pop culture moment we would like to hear that plus your favorite moment from the pod this year too like i think and, and, actually start off with that question yeah and if you the hating ass nigga that's commenting on our shit, 
We don't want to hear none of your goals. None of your <laughs> Actually, shit. no. None of that, nigga. I want to hear that, that shit. <laughs> I want to hear them goals to see if you ambitious enough mm-hmm. to even be commenting on yeah, our shit. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Send DM them shits to me. Because a lot of niggas like to critique shit that they can't do. Exactly. Comment on that, nigga. So if, if you're gonna be a hater, be good at it, but then also be better than us at what we do. Exactly. Don't you make. Know, don't you. let me go check your subscriber list. And it's, <laughs> you go out there and do it. Ours. You go out there and do it. And don't be ugly because yeah. you know I'm gonna say it. Yeah. You yeah. know I'm gonna say it. So yeah. yeah. That's double homicide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd your kids how'd your wife once again this will be the final episode for a little while we'll be taking a mid-season break for those who've been listening for a while you know we used to go from the fall to the spring and so we're just you know taking this time off to one reset we all got a, a very busy holiday season coming up mm-hmm. um so just giving ourselves some time away um we will have some bonus content coming for y'all sparingly but um we'll be doing this to kind of reset to what our our, our original schedule was um, but thank y'all who have locked in with us, you know, for this per- first portion of the season. Hope you have enjoyed, you know, the the, the new co-hosts and their growth, their their jokes, their takes. Uh, <laughs> I, th- I think Miss Two Bees has established her own hive at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. love that for me. Bzz, bzz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. um, so it's it's just time to get the will hive going next. Like we going, we're working we're, on we're it. Gonna get the will hive going working next. Um, but yeah, it's been very fun so far, and um, you know. Don't be sad. It's not over. It's just just a little break. You're like, yeah, y'all probably need a break. We need it too. Karen need a break. You busy, you know. <laughs> b- 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 busy b- as hell. Busy man. working on multiple shows. B- yeah. b- busy being from Staten Island. Like busy be busy being white. You know, it's just like you know. <laughs> busy being a mess fan. We yeah. stay busy over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, and... quite literally. <laughs> so that is that. But um, you know, until then, make sure of course you subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff um let us know how y'all feel about the episode and the takes and share your thoughts with us but most importantly and i know what you think i'm about to say the closing but actually you niggas need to vote and not just vote but vote informed get informed if you're not informed because a lot of people say go vote vote for what no like (sighs) to me there's a right and a wrong but i don't want to decide that for you i want you to inform yourself and then get out and vote because we see what happens when niggas write in Harambe or write in Hennessy, Donald Trump yeah. wins, and then the country is fucked up. So go get informed, and hopefully the information you seek will bring you to who the right candidate is. And I'll say it's a she. That's who the right candidate is. But you decide for yourself. Um, just exert your political efficacy. Do your civic duty mm-hmm. and go vote. And then stay safe, stay humble, and stay, stay busy. busy.